doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You will... But it's a call to know God and it's a call to understand His ways. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16. Theologically speaking, we know that the book of Ephesians was a demonstration of the apex of Paul's apostolic ministry. It was here that Paul communicated the, the revelations of God committed to him with the greatest sense of balance. Six chapters divided into three portions that demonstrate the full stature of the believer. Ephesians chapter 1 and 2 begins by giving us a revelation of our position, the positional advantage that we have on account of who Christ is. In chapter 1, it tells us what has happened to Christ. In chapter 2, we now find ourselves featured there that he's not only seated, but we are seated with him. Hallelujah. And then he begins to teach us the character and the lifestyle that is befitting for a believer. And now he teaches us the subject of warfare and not just warfare he now begins to guide us on the spiritual arsenals that are available for the believer and one of it is what we are considering verse 16 above all this is the first revelation we want to see meaning he had said some other things that considers um, important for the believer but he says above them all above every other thing he said taking the shield of faith please follow me carefully taking the shield of faith wherewith meaning with that shield of faith you shall have an ability that faith can give you an ability and he says with that ability you can quench how many here is a big secret there are certain weapons that cannot do certain things Prayer and fasting can cast a kind of spirits. Jesus said this kind. There are spirits that are casted just by declaring the name of Jesus. There are spirits that you must engage prayer and fasting. There are spirits that are casted through knowledge. There are spirits that are casted through sacrifice. There are spirits that are casted through covenant. There are spirits that are casted through agreement. But there is a mystery that can address everything. It says, wherein we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts, not some, the fiery darts of the wicked. Above all, I've taught you other principles, but above all, taking the shield of faith. He said, wherein ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts. I want you to follow the progression of the revelations that we share day by day remember that when i was talking to you about satan day two we were discussing how that satan influences people by informations 
are we together now that's it's not it's not satan's best when he oppresses people and afflicts them physically that's not where you get his best the best is he brings you to a system of servitude by selling an information to you that makes you his slave that's how he became the god of thrones and dominions and the kings upon the earth he supplied an information are we together and here the bible is saying that three things will happen one that a man he never said take faith take note now he didn't say take faith he said the shield of faith and then he says you will be able to quench the fiery darts what are they it's not it will be costly for us to assume we understand what he's saying what is fiery darts arrows Are we together now yes and then he says you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked so faith is many things a shield is one of what faith can become that's not all it can become but he's saying that faith has dimensions just like love the breath the length that there is a dimension of faith there is something you can do with your faith that can become a shield this is what he's teaching you already have faith but is it a shield faith can be an instrument of getting answers but not a shield the operation of faith as a shield is not the operation of faith that will give you answered prayers this is what i'm trying to teach you he's teaching warfare here not answered prayers he's teaching a defense system how a believer can use faith not just to obtain a good report like hebrews 11 no he's teaching warfare here there is how you can engage in faith and please god there is how you can engage in faith and receive things that god promised but there is how you can use faith like a defense this is not god now god is in heaven you are using your faith to defend yourself he's saying taking the shield of faith wherein you will be able to quench all the fiery darts let's look at what apostle john said first john chapter 5 and verse 4 first john chapter 5 and verse 4 he said for whatsoever is born of god remember we spoke about the seed of the serpent yesterday that whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world the greek word cosmos the social strata alongside the mindset that exists in it he says and this is that victory that overcometh the world even our faith so faith is many things an instrument for receiving answered prayer is just one of it unfortunately many people that's all they know about faith as an instrument that can bridge between you and what you want so every time we say faith our idea is just about receiving things are we together now that just an instrument to receive the bible says in warfare the shield is faith hmm. this is the victory that overcomes that there are fiery darts that can come for a believer and that when you know how to convert your faith like a shield it can shield all not some there is something you can do with faith that can shield all the fiery darts my first question is what is the fiery darts that that's where i want us to look at because if we don't know what it is what is the fiery darts of the devil that he says to quench now he was speaking to people in those days who were used to warfare and the shield he was talking about yes not some small shield that you see the way the the military people fought war the shield was as tall as them from head to toe they could hold it are we together now and in ancient times when they were fighting war because of how they were trained the tip of their arrows were dipped sometimes in poison and when they fired it if it touched any part of you it could kill you so the goal was for the the arrow to touch any part of you and it would destroy you number two sometimes they could light fire on the arrows 
are we together now and with that arrow something that will be burning maybe like kerosene or something so that if it touched you whether your clothes or whatever it could set you on fire and so he says that in that similitude satan throws things at people and that you can use your faith as a defense to quench all the fiery darts let's see what those fiery darts are now when you study systematic theology listen um you come across a concept called the law of first mention are we together the law of first mention or first use and that means that when you want to examine a word a subject a topic an idea you go to the bible and find out where it was first mentioned either that word or that operation are we together now and see how it was used then that idea is what you use every other place that expression is used in the bible for instance every time you see dove in the bible is symbolic of the holy spirit so you see the first context of his usage satan has never been associated with the dove he's been associated with many things the vulture and so on and so forth like that are we together now so this when we go to the first recorded account of satan and man and the fall of man the warfare we see how satan used this fiery dart in genesis chapter 3 and this is what happened let's turn there can we look at it briefly <laughs> hmm. genesis chapter 3 and verse 1 we have some prayers to pray tonight genesis chapter 3 now the serpent was more what subtle than all the beasts of the field which the lord has made and he what did he use what is his arrow what is the arrow what does he send to men words listen 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 understand what i'm teaching you the bible says he said to the woman woman yea had god said so we never see him beating the woman we never see him molesting her like tying her hand but what left him to her were words did god say ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden it's a question he engaged the woman in a conversation he made her listen to him and she replied verse 2 and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden verse 3 but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god had said remember he's forcing her to tell him what god said and he did not say it by saying what did god say he just asked a question that forced her to reveal he wanted to know what information god told her so that it would become the basis are you seeing that now when satan comes to you he doesn't talk he does something that makes you he wants to hear what did god tell you because that's where the faith is listen he said what did god tell you he said but of the fruit of um which is in the midst of the garden god had said ye shall not eat of it neither ye touch it lest you die so that's what god told her she memorized it and had it to heart next verse and the serpent said unto the woman what was he attacking the woman no he was not attacking the woman he was attacking the information upon which her confidence was upon listen carefully this is a warfare of informations he didn't say woman i want to attack you the woman was there and satan could not touch her because there was an information that became a shield her obedience to that information was what stopped satan so when satan come he said i want to know the, not you the information is what i want to attack and here he's saying that this is what god said and satan said that's it my attack is not on you my attack is on what is keeping you in pace with god if i can attack that thing i don't need to attack you something about your taking away the shield of faith will expose you are we together now and the bible says and the serpent said to the woman ye shall not surely die in other words forget about that thing god is saying it's nonsense let me give you another information and this is what he said verse 5 
let me show you how satan operates now satan on hearing what god has told her is trying to reveal something to her for god doth know that in the day ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil the fiery dance satan is creating a picture he's creating an idea that god is insecure he's just trying to tell you some things because he's insecure if you work with the information i'm supplying you you will find out that you will suddenly become like a god hmm. verse six all that thing satan was saying listen to me was doing something to the woman it was taking away the shield of faith the proof that the shield had been taken was this when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes she had been looking at that tree all the time in in the, our idea of tree as we know and the bible says and the tree to be desired to make one wise this new information had entered her mind it's like a programming this woman had received another information he said then she acted what is faith conviction and the action you take based on it god told her something that was a persuasion as proposed by her husband and she kept acting on the word of god that for as long as she kept acting on what god said it was a shield satan could not touch her because god's integrity will make what she believed to remain and now satan says there's no way i can attack this woman i will give her another source he did not stop her from having faith he changed what she was having faith in now satan is not a fool many people say he's coming to attack your faith no satan has never had the business of attacking your faith he's trying to attack your faith in god you need faith to do anything even if it's to work with satan because faith is about the persuasion that comes from ideas and the action you take based on those ideas here's what he did to the woman and the bible says she gave it to her husband who was with her you see that adam was with her he was not somewhere roaming around in the wilderness love kept him there that's a subject for another day the woman fell as a result of deception the man fell as a result of love apostle peter taught us adam was not deceived it was eve that was deceived adam loved his wife and as a proof so the next time you say i love you till i die or fall inside a well or something this word is a luciferian spirit that that statement verse 7 verse 7 and the eyes of them both were open now the people who came and led prayer here cried that our eyes be open but who opened it you see that another information had created another idea satan never made any physical contact in as much as we know but he kept firing that and that did something to the woman and force god to take an action against them think about it you can't accuse satan as it were satan said what did i do i only suggested to you and you believed it and put you in a position where god himself punishes you are we together now look how serious this thing is luke chapter 4 quickly please we had considered that scripture luke chapter 4 and jesus being full of the holy ghost returned from jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness next verse please and all of that he was tempted of the devil verse 3 and the devil what did satan do you see now again so you know where do you think satan learns this the idea of firing that through words have you read anywhere in your bible that he sent forth his word that he released his word and when his word got to people it did certain things to them satan understands the value of words that in this kingdom dominion is through words and what words do to men that's why jesus is called the word of god the word of god 
if thou be the son of God notice that when Satan comes to you he tries to say something to you that will force you to reveal something God has said he is not interested in you because he knows that you, on your own you cannot stand so he wants to see what is that shield that shield I'm going to soon show you he said if thou be the son of God command this stone to be bred and then Jesus answering him said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word and Satan said ah you know this scripture let's look at the third temptation please go to verse 6 and he brought him to Jerusalem and set him over the temple and said to him now watch this now if thou be the son of God cast yourself from hence verse 10 for it is written first time satan did not he just said if you are the son of god but now he said oh you are using scripture i know it too it is written he shall give his angels is that is that not true this is bible here satan is quoting the bible he shall give his angels charge so jesus don't you no longer have faith in the father what has happened to your faith that you cannot jump ah don't shame me don't fall my hand he said i'm aware that there are angels that protect you jump as a proof that you have faith if jesus jumped something would have happened to him that will change the course of history <laughs> i know you are surprised that if jesus had jumped do you know what made him the living logos ah you know if you read the bible don't just read the bible for the sake of devotion what would have happened if jesus jumped i know many of you would have ah, no, no matter what they would have come to catch him and all of that see they said we do not have a high priest who has not been tempted why will the bible use that word for jesus tempted like us yet without sin meaning there was a possibility it would have happened Are we together now yes and jesus he said for it is written so you see satan does not necessarily stop you from having faith because whoever gave you the shield is the one who defends it so satan just changes the object of your belief and your conviction and he leaves you there believing you have faith and destroy your life and wreck you he knows what he's looking for the shield of faith let me tell you this the bible never said having the shield of faith it says taking it there is something you are going to do to be do you know what the shield of faith is the shield of faith is not the written word logos the shield of faith is what god has told you that he's committed to defend over the issue you want what god has told you that god looks at you and says joshua no man will be able to stand against you that is the word satan is looking for not just the one you just find anyhow in scripture there is a rima word there is a revealed word for you that is the basis of your lifting for instance god can look at a woman and before you had your children god can say i covenant with you that none of your child will be wayward that's what satan is looking for no matter all your bible study words he will not bother because the strength of your children's remaining is your believing that word the day you stop believing it you have taken away the shield of faith and given satan room to wreck your children are we together god gives you a word and says surely surely you will have your children and there will be no barrenness you will be surprised that satan is not interested satan is not interested in what is written he's interested in what god said to you not to everybody let me tell you something the proof that god is ready to walk with you is that he gives you something that is the basis of believing him there is nobody 
that rises in the kingdom without a revealed word from God that becomes the basis of your confidence you want to start a business you go to God and pray and while you are praying either the Holy Ghost speaks to you or you a scripture jumps out and that word you see is where the attack comes from satan will begin to use things to fight that word the goal is to bring you to a point listen brothers and sisters warfare much more than the war of spirits is the war of informations because your conviction is based on what your mindset is carved upon are we together words this kingdom is a kingdom of words men fall by words men rise by words men reign by words when you see a woman unbending satan is trying to whip her family bad news when satan went before god listen he said satan have you considered my servant job a man that feared god and eschewed evil what did satan say he said you have built a hedge around him go and find out what that hedge is it was a secret that god gave job that he obeyed every time and as long as he obeyed that secret it was not a secret for everybody it was a secret that was uniquely given he said job this is the secret of your prosperity someone else will do it it will not work it's a secret between me and you and for as long as job obeyed it satan called it a hedge no matter how they tried to attack job it didn't work and he said lord please make job to do something give me access to the hedge job lost everything only his wife was standing and satan now began to manipulate the wife so that the one last word that is left and job said no though he slay me yet i would trust him and satan said my god i thought i would finish this guy i had reduced him down the one last string that would give me victory over job job has refused he still held that shield like a man beaten and would not let it go and the bible says job had his life restored again you can frustrate satan by keeping what god said to you no matter what he says no matter listen every one of us here there are there are parents that god told certain things but the economic hardship is frustrating them now they are buying into another principle are you getting what i'm saying now the victory is always in what god said not just your action if you act by yourself you are on your own until god gives you the matching order you cannot take a step so every time we want to command victory in the spirit the first action is to build conviction not based on what god said to us what he said to you that you have received there are things god has said to me as a man of god and as a man that is the basis of my confidence there are things god has told me you see that he may not have told you that we have the bible generally that teaches us the character of god but i'm showing you a mystery just this on its own is not the shield of faith this is the whole armor is something about it that becomes a shield just carrying the bible and move you are carrying an armor but there is a way it can become a shield the moment the rhema comes to you that's a shield god says use it use it carry that shield stand before the labor market and say when i was praying before i rounded up service god told me that i will always cause men to lift you that's the word that's the shield of faith satan comes and says but if it is true that god said it don't you have an uncle that is in nmpc he's doing something to you he's not just challenging your faith he's challenging the word of god what he's doing is he's shifting the shield you are a sister and god gives you a word they shall obey and serve him he shall bless them and god said just serve me and me myself god this is not a word for every lady is the word he gave you serve me and i will bring your husband that's what god says are we together now 
now look at this let me have your attention please this lady is serving god and all of a sudden satan comes with all kinds of gimmicks when satan comes and is looking at the workforce of that ministry he's not interested in the people what do they believe until you have revealed to satan what god has said he remains helpless so he has designed a way of finding out he because he knows that believers respond by confessing the word so he attempts to touch your life and hears what you say in response your speaking will tell him oh this is what god has said all right let's negotiate this is what god has said Ejimi, god said you will prosper did god say you will really prosper and then you say that and he says okay look at everything around you you have brain does it look like god and you say ah oh god you just took away the shield he will strike you in a way satan will never my bible says listen it says with the shield of faith if you refuse to bend it no matter what kind of that satan sends that shield that faith can quench it a spiritual man is not just the man that prays in tongues a spiritual man is the man that has mastered placing value on what god has said that you can hold it and say do he slay me madam you have all kinds of things the way we are looking at your case you may never have a child you say thank you doctor i understand you get back and say lord i remember i came for koinonia miracle service and you used a man of god to speak to me lord have you forgotten that you said i'm so before december i will have a child and satan uses a dream to try to change your mindset you have a dream and you see yourself losing a baby when you get up physically the devil now says how about that dream satan knows that images are the keys to killing men he will use images and whip your intelligence the bible says to be carnally minded is death so you look at your bank account and you look at it and you see that all you have is one thousand naira and god speaks to you and says son by the end of this year you will own a house and then the devil now tries to be scientific the word of god has the potency for accomplishment remember it's a sent word it's not a red word it's a sent word the word has become a messenger and every messenger must be obedient to his master remember the word of god is living so we are not talking of just a thing the word of god sent on Aaron. the angels follow that word to find out where the word needs their help to cooperate with it until it comes to pass your assignment is whilst that is you are the only one who can stop that word from coming to pass by taking away the shield there are many men of god who have taken away the shield of faith god told them things they saw things their eyes were open to revelations i've said it if i die today of sickness the last word that comes out of my mouth is by his stripes i am healed when we get to heaven god will either apologize to me for failing me or reveal to me where i missed it are you seeing that it says through faith time will fail me let me show you men who use this thing in the bible time will fail me to talk of gideon and jephthah and barak are we together he's a man who through this faith subdued kingdoms joshua look at joshua and caleb he said we are able to go up at once yes there are giants but what did he tell us he said we are bringing you moses when you came from the secret place you said god said from from egypt the land of captivity to canaan to canaan not wilderness i won't die here it's true we saw the anarchies it's true we know they are not pure human beings but it says the shield can give you an ability an ability and satan fires his arrows and human beings even pity you but when everything is gone you lift up ah and you say i'm still standing oh you thought it would destroy the ministry but i'm still standing you thought it would destroy my home and satan says what do i do with this person now listen let me tell you this everybody you see lasting in the kingdom understands this how to use faith as a shield the word of god must become your new eyes tonight 
are you hearing what I'm saying? That the same way you have an eye, pick what God said and let that become your system of interpretation. That you can sit down in your room, no Gary, and yet you are rejoicing. And Satan says, let's, let's cry together because you are making a mockery of yourself. He will even use believers. This is what is dangerous. He will use believers. You better use your brain. You are, you are a stupid person. You are just serving the Lord like a fool. You better settle down. And he said, no, I know him. I know him. Father, if it be thy will. But God already spoke to him. He knows why you are coming to die. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. And since I said, no, what do I do with him? There is nothing Satan can do with a man who will not find offense in God. There is nothing Satan can do to a man who will not blame God. When Satan pushes you and you do not charge God with guilt, I tell you, you have this. Let me tell you this. I don't know if you have been taught or not, but hear me. I found out a secret about Satan. He can be tired. You know how a man can be frustrated. Have you ever seen a man trying to do something and he's frustrated? You are trying to kick a car and after one hour, this thing is not working and you just dump it. That thing can happen to Satan. A believer can weary Satan that Satan will see you and mind himself. It is true. Jesus did it and he left Jesus for a season. He said, I'm tired. There's something he has told me. God, there is nothing on earth that will dwindle me the bible calls one who has fallen to the prey of satan a double-minded man he said let that man not think he will ever receive anything that means that person if there's no it, whatever it is that he thinks you depend on men satan will use them to manipulate your mind god will tell you start this business and the devil tells you look be careful he will use it is written I hope Satan spoke to God. He will speak to you and you will hear him. So don't you think every voice that speaks to you just because it is scriptures is of God. The fact that you just had a scripture that you can get the verse and chapter does not mean it is God. Satan is not a fool. When he comes to you, he says, and you know that wisdom is profitable to direct. And you say, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. No, no. You need discernment. Discernment to know that although this is scripture this is against the revealed word to me something is wrong listen if you want to rise in life and you want to reign in life listen to what i'm telling you your dominion in the final analysis will be on the strength of your staying power to say i'm not bending if i perish here is that kind of statement satan doesn't want that's the kind of thing that drives him crazy when you say satan i'm angry he says oh you are human you can change you come to church now and dance up and down but when satan sees your tears and you say satan if you are expecting to hear from me tomorrow that i've given up you are joking are we together job said though he slay me yet will i trust him all the days of my appointed time who told him the time was appointed i will wait until my change comes jesus said destroy this temple i'll build it in three days do you know why jesus resurrected it wasn't just because he was the son of god it was because the revealed word had declared that the grave would not be able to hold him there had to be jesus himself held on to a word in death and the word brought him back to life hear me believers the starting point of your victory is holding on to something that has been revealed something that god has said something that god has said there are things god has told me if god said it's a year of signs and wonders it can be a general word for everybody but in your place of prayer you will hear something from that word that becomes your word it's up to you now to hold it and say lord i thank you he said great peace have they that feared that fear him in nothing in nothing in nothing do you know there's a revelation that i have and god gave me that revelation luke 10 19 he says behold behold this is god talking to me not not believers 
God is talking to me, Joshua Selman, behold, see, conceive as a reality in your spirit. I give you power upon snakes and scorpions, to tread upon snakes and scorpions, and every power of the enemy, that's your revelation, let me tell you my own, and nothing shall by any means, what is by any means? mention the means of transportation you have air you have land mention the means by which satan can use to afflict people covenant whatever it is your own faith level self the bible says by any means hurt you i can't believe this one for you but it's the revelation that keeps with me that's the reason a herbalist can call my name in the shrine and die for nothing reduce his lifespan while i'm sleeping i'm not even praying about it because even in my sleep there is a shield you see it's not something you wake up and hold listen i have said it for a long time there is no mortal man born of a woman that can kill me it's not pride i'm standing on something god told me it's not just i shall not die but live that's a general revelation there is something God told you that you hold. God told Bishop Oyedeko, go and build a 50,000 capacity sitter. It cannot be done humanly. But that was a revealed word. And regardless of the odds, he kept that shield of faith. And in nine months, that word came to pass. Satan notwithstanding god declared a word to us as a ministry declared a word over the teachings over the things we are doing and we have kept that shield of faith no matter what it is kept what you see today is a product of the staying power of faith hmm. tonight's call is a call to take back your shield do you know why i say take it back because for some of you you've thrown it he said take it take it apostle god told me by november i'll be smiling take it i remember a lady that i i spoke to i can't remember uh, we were joking with her and i told her i said by december this year you'll be heavy and the lady was smiling and all of that and i said you see that now you didn't believe it and we were cracking jokes with her now if i'm joking it will come to pass you see that because i'm human i can joke doesn't mean that everything i say is the word I, i'm a human being we can play and joke but when it is the revealed word of god and you hold it god will surprise you you hear all these maybe miracle alerts and all of that it's unfortunate for people who don't believe this thing can happen the word of god except it is not sent if the word of god is sent brothers and sisters once you hold that shield just be watching satan like elijah while they are crying on bail for money look at elijah was mocking them his shield was there secured he knew what to do he knew the mysteries that will bring fire he was not guessing and he said call on your god you only mock satan when your shield is there and you look at him and say satan look at how elijah mocked them and said maybe he's sleeping call on him louder and when it was time he didn't just start saying lord and you don't disappoint me no he said set me the altars i know what to do bring 12 stones put water on them put the sacrifice and he cried upon the god of heaven and fire came and licked it faith is not mechanical there is no faith when there is no revealed word there is no faith when there is no revealed word let me tell you something i'm i'm careful when i'm sharing testimonies like this one day I was praying I was praying in the spirit very deeply and all of a sudden the word of the Lord came to me and this is what the Lord said he said I am sending 1,000 titles to the ministry 
and 1,000 titles to your life. The word. I said, what is the meaning of this? I wrote it down. 1,000 titles to the ministry. 1,000 titles to your life. As pe people in the ministry are more than that. And then I went to sleep. And all of a sudden, in my eye, I started seeing business organizations and individuals and all of that saying the Lord spoke to us to come and be paying tight some to your house some to you and I got up I said Lord is this it and the Lord said if you believe it and you receive it I will surprise you you don't have to know where they will come from you see that and all of a sudden I said Lord I'm a believer I take your word brothers and sisters it was like a charm hello is this coin on here this is so 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 and so company in lagos am i speaking to this and that um you are apostle joshua selman please give us the ministry account number the lord instructed us as a business that the tithe of this company for as long as we exist should come to the ministry and god said keep counting i said one thousand not just people giving you see that listen I'm, I, that's why i say i'm sorry if it sounds arrogant but i'm telling you you reign by the word you receive you reign by when god sends it you can reject it a word was sent through gabriel to mary the holy ghost will come upon you she would have said get out please and that's it the Holy Ghost would have gone to look for another virgin somewhere and said, This this Mary, she has not. But Mary said, Be it unto me according to your word. Do you know the controversy that followed that word? Mary, you are pregnant. Who got you pregnant? A ghost, you are joking. It's either Joseph or one rabbi. She said, No, God told me an angel just appeared to me, and God kept his word, and Jesus was born many of us would have birthed certain things if only you held that shield when it was one week for the prayer to be answered you gave in to satan and you threw the shield tonight my assignment in this prayer is that we are taking back that shield lord i've become a believer again i remember what you told me in 1992 i don't know what took my attention away but lord i'm remembering it again some of you when you go back there are the old notebooks that you wrote things that god said god described your destiny but because it was too big you just close it quietly go back tonight take back that shield lord i'm a believer take it and watch satan watch faith rubbish satan in your life listen in this prayer and fasting i'm demystifying satan for you the honor that has satan is human satan is a man he's not just a spirit he was once listen satan was once the head of a civilization on earth what jesus was sent to represent there was a day satan was sent to do it satan one time was sent on earth to be the revelator of the love of god to the then inhabitants that's what gave him the authorization to capture the people and say this God up there, have you ever seen him? Am I not the one representing him? That's why Romans said, who shall say, let's go up and bring him down for us. The word is nigh thee. Christ himself came and said, let it not be that God does not want to come to men. Now I have come. Not an angel. I have come by myself. The garden of Eden was not created for Adam and Eve. The first occupant of the garden of Eden is Satan. Ezekiel 28. That was in Eden, the garden of the Lord. He was there. Because of our wrong believing, we have given more power to Satan than should be. I told us yesterday, I know some of you don't believe it, that there are angels today that have fallen, that have nothing to do with Satan. It was not Satan that threw them. They were rebels another group of angels they are bound today in everlasting chains the devil and his demons are not bound in chains there are demons today now that are bound in chains the only reason why satan has not been bound is because there was a time given to respect his will for choosing to reject god when jesus was going to cast out the demons in gadara he said have you come to destroy us respect the rules 
there is a time but the time is not yet so what you can do now is to cast them and create a system of keeping them at bay the destruction as it were is something that there is a time appointed god respects it that's what makes satan looks powerful so he comes to you and said i am indestructible are you not seeing god's frustration in destroying me it is not god's it was michael that casted him down not even god you wait and see how god destroys satan it is fire that will come from his mouth and consume the creature flood will never happen on earth again it is now the ministry of fire are we together now it is with fire that lucifer will be destroyed so god's withholding him or withholding his hands from lucifer is not a sign of weakness but he takes advantage of our ignorance and makes it look like his continual dominion is proof that god is weak there is a time he has been conquered for the saints but his ultimate destruction will be done by god's sovereign power when the time appointed has reached but with the power and the strength of the word of god you can keep him at bay you can keep him that's why i cast out devils here and i drive safely i go home and sleep otherwise they are supposed to appear to me and say since you casted us in Cornonia, we are here in your house beg them to come if you ever meet them this is not just some bold statement beg say satan please come you can know this thing and carry your shield and pass satan and he will pass you and he will move brothers and sisters satan is not what we think he is he has used words he has sent fiery darts into the minds of preachers into the minds of book writers and they have in error magnified him beyond the proportion of his true size by light we are bringing him down to say look satan your only strength is in your ability to capture the belief of the saints and manipulate their understanding so the real warfare is not physical the real warfare is using the shield of faith to maintain that truth of god's word and that in maintaining it you force the integrity of god to appear in the scene Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because we are going to pray tonight. Satan's greatest weapon is doubt, unbelief. He manipulates your mind. He knows what your eyes can do. He knows what your ears can do. These are the gates to his dominion in your life. He sends those fiery darts. He uses dreams. He uses your physical experience. He uses the news you hear. And they just tell you, look, in the world now, it is ratio four ladies to one man. So the chances of a lady marrying, he uses the media to sell you that information. While you are reading the article, you are imagining yourself four rows behind. And then he tells you, look, um, just know that there is no marriage for you. And if at all it happens, you cannot have a child. There are women who believe once they are past 45, 50, they can't have a child again. And information proposed it to a territory. We have doctors here. So based on what you is, it's an opinion, but it's an educated opinion. Are we together? Yes. So a man, you go to the hospital and a woman, and they say you are impotent and you are barren. Look at the reports and you look at it and Satan steals into that conversation and says, see it. You to use your brain. What is, are you, didn't you go to school? Based on what they taught you, what is the analysis? But at that point, you lift the shield of faith and say, there is another report. He said, whose report? Many, many people will give you reports. Satan will give you reports. Science will give you reports. Your culture will give you reports. Well-meaning believers will give you reports. But whose report will you believe? I choose his report. I choose his report. I choose his report. I know what he's told me. I choose his report. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. He told Joshua no man shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life and so when an angel appeared to Joshua Joshua removed the knife 
He said, are you for us or against us? He would have killed that angel. The word of God on Joshua would have killed that angel if he did not explain. He said, no, calm down. Calm down. Because he was moving on a word. If it be thou, bid me come. Come. And he started walking on the word. And the moment he, Satan did not take him out of the river, he only took his face away and he started to sink. Listen. Let me challenge everyone, my brother, my sister. It will take faith to be established in this life. Brothers, let me tell you this. There is no guarantee anywhere that is a job that will lift you. There is no guarantee anywhere that is even your business that will lift you. You will need to take a shield of faith. The statistics are scary. If you believe them, you will never build a house forever. If you believe them, you will never own one land. Let me talk to my brothers first. Sisters, we can come to you, but let me talk to my brothers. Because the world is selling us a lie. And we are believing those garbages. I don't have any godfather anywhere. I don't have anybody anywhere. Ah! This God. This God that can pick a man from the dunk hill overnight. When a young man prospers fast, people get angry. I don't believe in all kinds of wrong schemes and all of that. But let no one fool you that God does not give people speed of lifting an establishment. Don't let anybody come and say, take, uh, take it easy. What they mean is be careful for something. And the Bible says be careful for nothing. Take it easy. When you are 45 and you buy your first car, it's all right. You can give God glory. For as your child can go to another school, doesn't make sense, doesn't matter what they teach, as soon as you can afford. It's a proposition. Don't just see it as an information, it's a that. But when you believe God's report, we have been taught that everything in life, you buy it. So all you are looking at is money, not God. But the Bible says they got the land in possession not by their own sword. Neither did their arm save them. That the God of heaven can arise. When you teach people superior spiritual strategies, they will ignore it. That's what makes people get angry. Once you see a young man with the blessing of the Lord, everybody starts getting angry and suspecting and, and in bitter hatred because they, they don't know what, what formula did you route this possibility from. No, sir. It is unto you according to your faith. It is not unto us. It is unto you. Blessed is she that believes. For unto her, not her and her neighbors, unto her alone, there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken, spoken, spoken. We are going to pray. I'm taking our time. This is not a little issue at all. You ignore it, you will fail in life. Brothers and sisters, listen. The fierceness of today's world, Satan has captured the media. He has captured every mechanism that transfers information to men. You just need to go out and there's unbelief everywhere. Wake up in the morning, the news is unbelief. Go around, the news is unbelief. Enter a lecture hall, unbelief. Your job, unbelief. You must say, no! I reject that report. I reject that report. There are people today, they said Nigeria is in a recession. They started going down. They are not even working for Nigerian government. But just because they, they received the report, they started, whether or not there was a recession, the truth is they are not even doing anything. They just believed and went down. I reject it. Ah. The Bible says there was darkness in Egypt, but in Goshen, the light. When the angel of death was slaughtering people like animals, there were people in Goshen who were moving and enjoying. You can exempt yourself, not only by light, not only by the sword of the spirit, you can hold the shield of faith. You can use your faith, not just as an instrument to receive things, but it keeps you until the word of God manifests. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I've shared with you? Rise up on your feet. Let's pray.
Are you ready to pray? The first prayer point is that you are going to pray and say, I sanctify my eyes and my ears. I command you to refuse any report that is not of the Lord. Lift your voice and pray. I command a sanctification that my eyes be purged with eyes out. That the gates of my ears come on that divine covering. Lift your voice and pray. I command it. I command it. My eyes and my ears be filled to the ears of the fears and doubts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare tonight that I am a believer. A believer of God's word. God cannot lie. God cannot fail. Therefore, every spirit of doubt of fear, of fear of unbelief, of unbelief. I cast you out of my life now. Lift your voice and pray. I command fears. I command doubts. My God is alive. My God is alive. My God still prospers. My God still heals. My God still delivers. My God still restores. I believe, I believe, I believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe the word of God, then let's pray three or four scriptures that can be for us as a rema word that we hold on to. Ready? Psalm 112. Psalm 112. Psalm 112. There is a prayer I want us to pick out from there and cry to God. He said it's a year of signs and wonders. Don't mind the naysayers. Don't mind those who mock you. He said, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that delighted greatly in his commands. Number two. This is the first prayer point. His seed. Your seed is not just your child. Your ideas, your business, your goals. is whatever comes from him. His seed shall be mighty. Lift your voice and say, My seed. I command you to be mighty. Lift your voice and pray. Your ideas, your influence. I command my seed. Be mighty. Be mighty. Spiritual seed. Be mighty. Financial seed. Be mighty. 
Hallelujah. Do you believe what you just prayed? Yes, sir. Because when I say seed, ladies say I don't carry the seed, I only receive it. So the devil will deceive you in not praying. No. Seed is not just for men alone. Your seed is anything that proceeds. Listen, one of the ways to command influence is through your seed. You send your seed on assignment. Bill Gates sent his seed on assignment. Zuckerberg sent his seed on assignment. Wisdom is justified by her seed, her children. Listen, in life, if you are the only one who is mighty, you have failed. It is the might of your seed that maintains your position. Nobody rises alone. You rise alone in your family. And all those under you don't rise. And watch them bring you down again by themselves. He said his seed, we are going to pray it again. Lord, the spirit of smallness the spirit of mediocrity that keeps me and everything that proceeds from me small i curse it in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray my ideas my dreams my seed shall be mighty my seed shall be mighty my seed shall be mighty. My seed must be mighty. My seed must be mighty. In the name of Jesus, everything that proceeds from Koinonia must be mighty. The teachings mighty. The revelations mighty. The miracles mighty. Hallelujah. Give us the next verse. I want you to pray this scripture. It says wealth and riches. They are not the same thing. Wealth is different from riches. It says both of them. You can have wealth and not have riches. When you have a great idea in your mind, you have wealth. But if there's no money in your pocket, you are wealthy, but you are not rich. You can have money but no idea, no system of replenishing. He said both wealth and riches will be domiciled. They won't be visitors. That means wealth and riches are spirits. You can call them and say you are welcome. Hey. Just like goodness and mercy. Lift your voice and call them for Lift your voice. The Bible says wealth and riches shall be my I decree and declare. I decree and declare. Wealth and riches shall be in Koinonia for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the kingdom. Wealth and riches shall be in my life, shall be in my house, shall follow my children, my children's children. Hallelujah. The last verse is a prayer that many people don't understand. It's a waste in life if you spend your life building something that in one day just crashes. There is a spirit that destroys the good works of men. The Bible says his righteousness endures. His righteousness, his good works, the testimony of your impact remains forever. There are people who are in ministry for 30 years. Then in one month, something happens around your life and crashes everything. 
destroys the testimony forever you are going to lift your voice and say what the lord do it he do it forever in my life there is no rising to the lift your voice and pray his righteousness to endure forever Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Was he praying against the spirit of poverty? Isaiah 45. Verse 2 and 3, Isaiah 45. Please be angry and pray. Don't join the people who have kept people in, in penury and destroyed the heritage of the faith upon their life. He says, I will go before thee and make the crooked path straight. He says, I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Verse 3, and I will give thee Christ. I will give thee the treasures the treasures of darkness brothers and sisters this is not a parable it's not a parable I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I the Lord which calleth thee by name I am the God of Israel and say Lord the hidden riches that belongs to me i'm ready to receive it in this season for my family for the gospel for the kingdom scriptures Isaiah 58 give us verse 11 and 12 powerful prayer Isaiah 58 verse 11 I'm giving you shields that you stand upon and the Lord shall guide thee continually there are people whose lives are suffering today because they lack divine guidance thou shalt hear a voice from behind everybody's running this way you run and crash with them he says the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in recession that when there is drought he will not only give you he will satisfy your soul and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a well watered garden like a spring of water whose waters fail not verse 12 and they that shall be of thee thy seed again you see that now and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations thou shalt be called the repairer that in this family nobody ever rose but all of a sudden there is somebody called the repairer 
the fixer of the cost, the repairer of the tragedy. Lift your voice and pray this. Lift your voice and pray. The repairer of the bridge. The repairer of failed marriages. The repairer of destructive destinies. If I were you, I will pray this next prayer with all my heart. Isaiah chapter 60. We are reading from verse 10 to 14. In fact, 10 to 15. Listen, brothers and sisters. Believe everything you are about to read. These things are not something that was written to some ancient people. Hear what the Bible says. And the sons of strangers who will build koinonia. Who will build your house? No, you can choose to save for it. You can believe that strangers can arise. Listen. The sons of strangers, the seed of strangers shall build thy walls. They are kings. The word minister is so, so into your life. They are kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor I've had mercy on thee. Next verse. Therefore, Kabarakatoskia, thy gates shall be open continually. Listen, it says they shall not be shut. That's why you can sleep in the night and still wake up with an alert. It said day, night. That men, who are those who will bring it? Men. That men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles and their kings may be brought. We are reading to verse 15 quickly. For the nation and the kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Next verse 14. It says the the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fir tree, the pine tree, the box together to beautify where? The place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. 14, we are reading to 15. The sons of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves at the sole of thy feet they shall call thee the city not a person not a jimmy that you were born in a cave but right now you are a city he says the city of the lord the zion a one man becoming a city 15. whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated so that no man went through thee I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Open your mouth and turn it to your prayers. Lord, I receive it. Lord, I receive it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you are turning everyone in Jordan to a city. You are turning everyone in this ministry to a city. You are turning everyone in this ministry to a city. A small one shall be great. A small one shall be great. We may start small, but a small one shall be great. Oh, 
Hallelujah. 60 verse 1. Isaiah, we are going to pray. Just two more prayer points and we are done. Listen, you are going to lay your hands on your head. Your head is a symbol of your glory. Listen. The Bible says arise. It's a command. If you don't rise, you are in disobedience. It says arise. Do you know what arise means? Come out. Come out of limitations. Limiting beliefs. In the next one minute, I'd like you to blast and prophesy that my glory arises. I command Listen, before we take the last prayer point, let me give you an assignment tonight. As much as God grants you grace, eh? find like four or five scriptures tonight. Don't just snow yourself into tomorrow. Are we together? One of the best ways to pray faith prayers is to pray scriptures directly. Yes, just find a scripture and pray it in tongues till it leaches onto your destiny. That's how I pray sometimes. I just begin to speak directly. Lord, this is what you said. I believe it. And you watch the God of wonders arise and surprise you. Are we together? I began to feel strongly my spirit after I went back yesterday. That the Lord was leading us to pray, especially along the area of this release from financial captivity. Huh? We are spiritual people yes, and we sir. love the Lord. But let me tell you the truth. There is no dominion if God does not free you and free your hand and free your children. One of the greatest ways to be a slave is to keep you a beggar. Are we together? He said the rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower, the borrower believer, the borrower tongue talker remains a slave. To the lender this is not some money mongering ambition of people who don't love god these are people who understand the systems of the kingdom are we together now yes so we're still going to be dealing with these things i believe if god grants grace subsequently but for now we're just going to pray one last prayer one last prayer there's a separate i'm sure that between now and friday i don't know which of the days but god will grant us time to pray on it but the last prayer that i want us to pray is found in Luke 6 38 the B part the B part of Luke chapter 6 and verse 38 good measure press down Listen, shaken together. Give us Amplified. Look at what Amplified writes. Very funny and very interesting. Good measure. 
pressed down shaken together and running over shall they pour into the pouch formed uh, or whatever it is and all of that it says for with the same measure you meet that's the same measure that will be given to you uh, there's a version that says um shaken together to create space for more but for time's sake it says shall men go back to to king james the word men is the word i want us to pray tonight good measure pressed down joshua selman shaken together running over shall men shall shall where will the alert come from the favor the breakthrough the job the access say in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i prophesy to the north i prophesy to the north i prophesy to the south i prophesy to the south i prophesy to the east i prophesy to the east i prophesy to the west i prophesy to the west every man every man anointed by god anointed by god to lift me to lift me to bless me to bless me to open a door for me tonight i call you into my life open your mouth and pray good measure good measure in business good measure in ministry good measure in your job in your career good measure in your family good measure press down shaken together running over shall men in Zaria shall men in Kaduna shall men in Lagos shall men in London shall men in US men in, in, in Asia shall men in the village men in the city men on the mountain men in the valley believers unbelievers alike shall men bring I call on the gift of men. I place a demand on the gift of men in my life, in this ministry. I call on the gift of men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're rounding up. There are many challenges that our loved ones are in now. It's only a man sent by God, not called by you, sent by God that will take you out. He said there was a man sent from God. His name was John. Sent from God. There is a helper sent from God to the Adegbeye family. There is a helper sent from God to so 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 and so there is a helper listen nobody helps you just because they know you don't let anyone fool you they can know you and say i'll see you tomorrow nobody just helps you like that in this wicked world that we live in but there is a man he can even be a cyrus sent from god listen everybody that has risen in life will tell you they met a man who fell in love with them yes, sir. and let me tell you how you know it is of God is that it does not make sense yes, there is no reason why that man should be committed to you that's how you know this one is the finger of God yes, what is house that God cannot send a man to give what is a car that God cannot send a man to give what is school fees that God cannot send a man to pay. What is house rent? Honestly speaking, listen to me. Shall men give? There was a man sent to Joshua Selman from God. Like a man sent on assignment. There were many widows in Zarephath. But I don't know what that widow did. That made God send Elijah to her. People have been sent to this ministry and my goodness, they have done things in this ministry we will never recover from.
sent by God not even members of koinonia there was a man sent from God hear me yo this is the antidote to a life of hardship and struggle you can call people but the day God sends a man it will not make sense he will sit in your house you are not around but you will remain there till evening who are you sir I had a dream oh God sent me to you and he said I should help you that you must rise do you know my father sir that's even the man himself the the sendee is surprised he doesn't even know why he's coming to you ah. listen we're praying and we're rounding up but I want to say this my prayer for you is that God will do something in your mind to make you believe it is men that lift men it is God that gives the instruction but the physical lifting is by men the position you need to rise to now there is a hand already that can lift it hallelujah someone was producing eggs real eggs just a woman started a business with poultry and was producing eggs and was crying that God will help her true story all of a sudden she was she was even passing and she felt led to enter a church and they were praying or something when they finished she just greeted somebody who gave her a lift she did not know that that man was the owner of a hotel a new hotel that just started and from that time the man told that she would be the sole supplier of everything poultry to that hotel now you would think you are doing the same business with a woman that man is not doing business with her he's a millionaire he's helping her there are men who do things not because they want anything they want to help you are we together i have seen the help of men someone will look at you and say do you have a company you say no sir you say why he say come there is something i want to make sure you are part of it so that you will get something you will think that something is 10 naira until you see what comes out of it you will run home and say everybody rejoice they are crying say don't cry for what rejoice god has answered us god answers men by sending men are we together you can be planning your marriage and somebody just gets up and says bring me the total budget how much is it he says size three million he said i'm surprised with recession is still three million uh, i would do something about it you think he's going to give you cow of one twenty thousand until you see an alert of four million you say sorry i couldn't do much look at me i want to be very honest with you you belong to this ministry how do you think we run this ministry have you ever thought about it be very honest there is a supply that can come from heaven oh. there is a supply you see our our muslim brothers who come with their buses and stay for hours they are not stupid to come and park for 30 minutes and be watching and then carry you happily back if there is nothing coming to them that rewards all the time they are staying Make him mad, 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 make him Just one more time. Make your ma, 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 make your ma. Babu, babu, when they come out the cave. Many times our minds and our consciences will deceive us into thinking because we look so far and think we are innocent and then we believe that the innocence brought the nature by itself now there is no assumption about that nature it is taken away only by the blood of the eternal covenant the blood of jesus christ himself 
and this life is in his son so that whosoever has the son has eternal life if you are not born again that life is not in you period if you are not born again that nature is still at work in you that is the chiefest authorization of satan greater than even any covenant that you have willfully brought yourself under the government of satan that's why i said i set before you the choice is yours life and death i set before you blessing and cursing i can only advise you i can't force you choose life that you may live one of the ways you choose life is to say lord i i i submit to your government i come willingly out of the government and the hold of satan is deliverance the name of that deliverance is salvation as free and cheap as it is you must participate in it otherwise it will not work are you getting what i'm saying now so the sin nature but number two the second dimension of the flesh and and that is that is the one that i think af affects us because i know that a greater number of us here by the grace of god are born again we've given our life to christ and so based on the authority of the word we know that that nature is gone but the second the second dimension of what the bible calls the flesh is a stronghold write it down a stronghold a stronghold a stronghold in our minds that is fortified by the presence of demon spirits a stronghold this is flesh now the bible is talking about a stronghold in our minds that is fortified listen carefully fortified by the presence of demon spirits are we together motivated by self-centeredness vainglory and self-exaltation a stronghold in our minds fortified by the presence of demon spirits that is motivated by self-centeredness write it down self-centeredness vain glory vain glory and then number three self-exaltation that's what the bible calls the flesh so when the bible speaks of the flesh within the context of a believer he's talking of a stronghold that is present not in your spirit a stronghold that is present within your mind within the solical realm are we together now that is fortified the fact that it is not can you see that even in your mind demons are still there follow me you will be blessed tonight motivated by self-centeredness remember my teaching christ-centeredness motivated by self-centeredness motivated by vain glory motivated by self-exaltation this the bible says that nature that nature there is no good thing in that nature that means whoever entertains that nature to control and govern your life the result is already predictable there is no good thing no matter how much deliverance gallons and gallons of anointing oil no matter how much prayer and fasting no matter what you do if this nature is allowed unattended to then paul already gives you your faith are you seeing the reason why many deliverance ministries for instance it looks like it's an endless struggle of attempting to do something you can pray dry you can pray all kinds you can do all kinds and and find out that in the midst of it it looks like forever you are casting spirits it looks like forever you are casting spirits it's like a journey of consistently casting spirits this is it and satan knows satan does not mind entertaining you during your deliverance session for as long as he finds out that this is unattended to you can do every other thing you want to do he will be glad to be represented and flatter you into thinking you are so anointed whereas the major issue has not been dealt with a stronghold 
a stronghold and satan has taken advantage of the church listen very carefully because we have been taught that a believer cannot be possessed that is true but possession is not the only way spirits participate in your life i'm going to be showing you now so we mean that just because a believer is not possessed every other thing that happens is just his thinking that is not working well uh, leave satan out and we have allowed satan to mess up our our understanding the construction of our beliefs and you find out that although you know the zoe life is in your spirit how come in the soul realm you are so helpless to him to the point that it even looks like your salvation is a lie are you ready to follow me on this journey tonight the flesh the bible gives us let me just tidy it up so that we we'll leave this and and just go very quickly the bible tells us what to do with the flesh galatians chapter 5 we'll read 15 to 17 then we'll jump to colossians chapter 3 1 and 2 16 and 7 galatians chapter 5 16 and 17 16 let's start from 16 galatians 5 16 this i say then the same paul is speaking what is the remedy for the flesh walk ye it didn't say receive the spirit walk ye in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh he's telling you this remedy you are not just going to say flesh I'm, I'm tired of you no he's saying you must find a way whatever this is walk ye in the spirit and then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh 17 he says for the flesh lusted against the spirit notice what is the flesh attacking talk to me what is the flesh attacking that the flesh will look for everything the spirit of god has created for you to do and that's what it fights the assignment of the flesh is to cause you to consistently violate the ways of the spirit and the spirit also that means when you are spirit controlled you will find yourself fighting the attributes of the flesh and the bible said these two these two are contrary the one to another so that ye cannot do the things that ye would let me explain to you what this means in any case you are not just allowed to do what you want there has to be one of them so you are under conflict today you are this tomorrow you are that and paul is saying let me explain to you that these vacillations is as a result of a war the war is an attempt by the flesh or the spirit to gain dominance over your life that you feel so prayerful today and tomorrow you just sit down and say okay, to hell with this jesus self i'm not even sure paul is saying it's not your fault i'm explaining to you at the point you were saying to hell you are still not on your own are we together now another force another agency you are only executing what that agency has planted within you mm. the flesh People talk so much about the power of God. They talk so much about freedom, yet they never talk about the flesh. And so Satan doesn't mind our fasting. Satan doesn't mind our prayer because he knows that that stronghold is there. And what a joy to Satan when he finds out that you advise yourself that just because I am in Christ, automatically, the only thing that is left is just for me to keep receiving scripture. And as I receive scripture, I will change automatically. It looks very spiritual, but I will be showing you it's a dimension of deception. Because many of us have been doing it obediently and it has not been working. As always, we have been trained to keep quiet and, and, and not to be honest enough. So we make it look like I'm, I'm okay, everything is fine. No, you are not fine. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 and then we'll go to 1 and 2 then 16 and 17 look at this Paul is now buttressing on what he means by walking in the spirit remember he already told us that when you walk in the spirit you can conquer the flesh one of the ways you walk in the spirit is what read with me one to read if ye then be risen with Christ that means if it is true that you claim that you are risen with Christ it says seek those things which are where above seek those things which are above 
where Christ seated on the right hand of the Father, verse 2. Set your mind, set your affection. Now he uses something very interesting. Your affection, your affinity, your desire, your longing. Set it like you set a thermometer. Set it to make sure that it is focused on the things above and not on the things that are of the earth. Are we together and then verse 16 says let the word of christ dwell in you richly now notice he says richly in all wisdom that's a very serious part we neglect it's not just enough for the word of god to dwell in you in terms of verses just he said no wisdom it should be constructed in a way that profits you the word of Christ can dwell in you in a way that you are just accumulating scripture but it's not profiting you it says there must be a construction of the word of God in such a way and a manner that that word is done in wisdom then teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart from the Lord last verse 17 and then we are done now watch this and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's teaching us the various strategies that can help you to walk in the spirit. One of it, he says, set your affections. Number two, do all you do in the name. As touching the government and the office that you represent. Walk in the consciousness of the fact that you are under an authority. He's teaching here of the various ways that you can set your mind. Believers, hear me. Let me tell you sincerely. No matter how much prayer and how much fasting and how much casting of a demon that you cast out of someone if that person has made up his mind to be carnal and fleshly and not set your mind on spiritual things i hate to be a bearer of bad news but you only succeeded in wasting your time i give you a guarantee satan has infinite ways of returning back to that person the bible tells us when a spirit leaves a man it doesn't go and say okay i've even satan left jesus for a while he came back again to find out jesus have you been discouraged so far i left you when you were about to start ministry if satan left jesus for a while whatever makes you think that just because he left you five years ago he has gone and said okay serve god with all mm -mm. he's waiting for you at the corner of discouragement he's waiting for you where your money finishes he's waiting for you where you have a bad news or where you lose a loved one here he comes again because he knows that these things have a way of seeming to bring us down from that that echelon of spirituality it now brings us down and satan comes the bible says walk ye in the spirit i know you don't like what i'm teaching tonight but it's a powerful formula as simple as it is it's a powerful formula the flesh that stronghold the mistake that many people are now trying to make you see in correcting look at this come there is a difference between transformation happens in the realm of the mind but transformation is spiritual it's a miracle let's not reduce transformation to just the realm of scientology where we say put formula a add b to it no 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 principles are not just scientific formulas principles are spiritual laws that are backed up with the very power and presence of god get this please because when you study online and go around you find out that um sometimes if you are not careful you can just sit down and all you are doing is searching for laws at random just because something is a law and it works you just carry it and throw it in your mind and convince yourself that just because you put in an information that looks superior to what you already know automatically you just go no laws on their own don't drive spirits transformation is a powerful miracle it's another kind of deliverance the first dimension of transformation is not receiving the word the first dimension is the spirit entities that guard that stronghold must be taken away that deliverance must happen to you you can be a pastor prophet apostle 
bishop whatever you can be and flatter yourself that because of the 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 physical paraphernalia that is around your ministry you are free no you will need that deliverance you can pray in tongues non-stop every day for many years and that stronghold is just quietly watching you you reign you reign hello king you reign you reign talk about deliverance now there are a number of things I want to teach you about deliverance let's talk about demons Let's talk a little bit. I have to, if I don't talk about demons, um, I'm looking at my course content here. Can we talk a little about demons? Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30. Let's go to the parable of Jesus. I want us to study a bit on, on demons. Look at this another parable look up please he put forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven that means the operation of the kingdom of heaven is likened to this a man which sowed good seed everybody say a man everybody say seed one more time say a man say seed he sowed good seed the fact that the bible specified good seed already is a message are we together remember my message during the prayer and fasting 25 but while men slept while men did what his enemy came also having a seed his enemy didn't come with a knife his enemy didn't come with a gun his enemy watched what he sowed and came with his own too watch this and the bible says he came and sowed tares among the wheat and did what and went his way he represented his presence with the seed are we together now he went away when he dropped that seed there he didn't need to stay there again because he knew that the seed was a replica of himself but when the blade was sprung up so that which was a seed now became something else and brought forth fruit then appeared tears also so the servants of the household that came and said unto him sir did did not thou sow good seed in thy field in other words ah, didn't you get born again where did this come from are you not a pastor's child are you not a, a a a prophet's daughter are you not is it not you that was baptized yesterday where did this come from from whence then had it tears 28 and he said an enemy has done this and then his servant told him will thou that we gather them up and then he says allow it that's that's what 29 and 30 says lest while we gather up the tears we root up the wheat in them and then verse 30 let them both grow together until harvest in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers gather first the tears that means something will happen in the time of harvest that will show the difference but as it is now you can't see it and if in an attempt watch this if you understand this mystery you will know why you can be doing many things and God will not talk to you about it 
it doesn't mean that he doesn't see it it's because if he wants to circumcise you at that level it will affect your growth process so bad so he will be patient with you to just grow you can be an arrogant man and god will never say anything about your arrogance so you will think that you are all right just because he's not talking about it a day will come as you keep working with him when he sees that you are now mature to undergo that level of spiritual circumcision he will take you back to the subject of arrogance and you will be surprised that you are in that level of height and now god is dealing with the issue of arrogance the seed the seed this, these demon spirits that we're talking about, we have to understand them. You hear people say demons everywhere. Many of you here in Koinonia and around, you've seen demons come out of people. You've seen their violence. You've seen their aggression. Sometimes you hear people speak, you know, another spirit. Many of you watch TV around or go for meetings. Where you, Who are they? Where, where do they come from? Genesis chapter 3. Let's see how we can look at it. Oh, Jesus. Is God blessing us already? Genesis chapter 3. Give us verse 15. Genesis chapter 3. Let me just touch on it. And that God will grant us grace. Now, by way of introduction to this, I hope you know that Paul the Apostle, Paul the Apostle did not leave us in the dark. As to the fact that when the Bible says darkness is a combination of many things I hope you know that when the Bible says darkness and it says spirit dark spirit is not just one a consummation of just a group of demons it is the summation of every spirit entity and every kind of spiritual organogram that is antagonistic to the ways of God because I'll, as I'll be showing you there are many there are many this is the Lord now speaking with the woman after their fall. I'm just saving time. That's why I said we should go to verse 15. If you're with me, say amen. And I will put enmity. Who is speaking here? God. Between thee and the woman. Between Satan and the woman. God is speaking to them both now. I will put enmity between you, Satan, and the woman. He would have stopped there and then we'll understand. But then he says, I will also put enmity between what? Thy seed and her seed. So the, the person he's talking to has seed. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He's talking to Satan as one who has seed. The capacity to multiply himself and his agenda. Hi and he looks at the woman you don't talk to a woman about seed because you know from biology that women don't have seed they receive seed so the thing confused satan god why are you now talking about her seed where is it going to come from that's why the moment cain came satan believed that cain was that seed and tried to attack him from that day till moses till everybody till john the baptist once satan sees a male that a woman is giving birth to he starts pursuing them because he suspects that that may be the seed are you getting the point now between your seed and her seed now questions we have seen the seed of the woman we are part of that seed correct where is the seed of satan because the bible lets us know very clearly god himself speaking that as the woman is multiplying her own seed this spirit entity is multiplying his own seed too are we together genesis chapter 6 genesis chapter 6 and it came to pass i'm fast forwarding now it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the surface of the earth listen carefully he says and daughters were born unto them what happened verse 2 that the sons of god the hebrew word there is benign elohim it's not just sons of god like it was an error in translation it's not like sons of god like believers no are we together like like progenitors those who were part of his creation these were 
a class of angels that this class of angels came and saw the daughters of men do you know who these angels were these angels were not just the exalted angels because i hope you know that by the time the angels that fought with lucifer fell from heaven the ones that came down with him adam was not there adam's story and genesis one was not there they had fallen in a particular dispensation are you getting what i'm saying now mm. so by the time god is creating adam or recreating the earth and making adam there are already inhabitants in the earth satan alongside the myriads of fallen angels are you getting what i'm saying now mm. and because spirits don't die in the context of cessation of life i will tell you what the death of a spirit is i i, I told you i was going to tell you but spirits don't die in the context of ceasing from breathing and ceasing from movement the moment adam came to start another race these spirits were looking for a way to find expression are we together now it's a very serious thing and the bible says that while they were voyaging around the earth all of a sudden they saw the daughters of men that they were fair to look upon it's a scriptural way of saying they were very beautiful are we together that means those angels had feelings hello it's not all the classes of angels that you know theologically there are all kinds of arguments whether angels have the, uh, the ability to reproduce or not and we, we see it here that the angels saw the daughter of men the daughters of men and they took them wives that means they could marry they came down and saw beautiful ladies like you looking at me now and the angels chose they advised themselves he said look let's marry these women verse 3 and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for seeing that his flesh is there shall be 120 verse 4 there were what now watch this the bible just tells us that a come darling an angel are we together now a fallen angel benign elohim all of a sudden sees human people pure humans and the bible says took them to wives and all of a sudden we now see the manifestation of a species that the bible calls them what I'm trying to trace the origin of demons for you that giants until this time there were no demons on earth they were fallen angels there were other dark spirits that had been in other civilizations but not demons these giants were in the earth the Bible says that when the sons of God came into the daughters of men you know what that means and they bear what children that means that the seed those fallen angels had seed within them and that their seeds got these women pregnant and they gave birth to these giants who were mighty men of old men of renown are you following my story now so we trace that these women were minding their business all of a sudden these beings come that there is a possibility ah goodness so spirits can get physical women pregnant so we see that there's no argument there are we together this information is useful we need it because that's how jesus came into the world are we together now listen carefully jesus came into the world how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man joseph has not finished paying my dowry don't embarrass me and he said no a spirit is coming from heaven i will show you this is the mystery ah goodness i'm already excited let me just take it easy so these spirits came and all of a sudden when the women gave birth to children the children started growing unusually they had features that were superhuman it was clear that these spirits were not pure humans the seed of lucifer in those children started cursing them the bible says god saw that the wickedness of man this spirit started introducing attributes upon the earth men were not that wicked 
all of a sudden there was a fabrication of different levels of wickedness and then the people in the earth ah, who are these beings that can be so wicked that means a normal man has a maximum level to which his heart can conceive evil if evil goes beyond that level something else is responsible for that level of heartlessness follow me because as i taught you this seed is still on earth today are we together the bible says that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually this was not the case now man had become so depraved the bible says and it repented the lord that he had made the man in the earth and it grieved his heart now watch this thank you darling did you know the lord said i will destroy man whom i have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that i have made them just stop there god is regretting these spirits have found their way back into this adamic civilization they were there casted now with the ability to reproduce they found a way of creating continuity for themselves because remember the law of territory if you don't have a body these angels these spirits because they are not demons it is demons that don't have bodies angels have bodies that's why they could come to even meet angels can translate themselves into physical bodies is that true remember the angels that came to abraham they didn't come as ghosts flying they were human beings this was what caused the flood of noah are you getting what i'm saying now the flood of noah was a system of judgment that god needed to annihilate that entire race the question is the giants let me use you again the giant children that were born by these angels and this when the flood happened because spirits don't die in terms of cessation of living the bodies now died and the spirits are you getting the point now the spirits of all those rays the name of those giants as you know theologically speaking is called the nephilims are we together now this disembodied spirits because every time a spirit is not in a body what happens it becomes restless these spirits they can't go to heaven they can't go to hell and they float within the circumference of earth and the second heavens and that is the reason why these spirits today are those we call demons listen carefully the demon spirits that you call are the spirits of these nephilims the sons before demons came there was already darkness listen carefully before demons came they were already fallen angels the fallen angels and the daughters of men produce what we call demons disembodied spirits now watch this look up i want to prove a few things for you i, I hope that you are getting what are you get are we are we still together let me just know that we're together do you know that fallen angels cannot possess men there is no record in scripture from genesis to revelation where a spirit was inside a man are we together now and then they ask who are you and he says um i'm angel so 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 and so no no it may look like it is the spirit but those i will tell you what their office is because those fallen angels are still working today but they are not the ones inside men are we together those disembodied spirits are the ones who move and i hope you know that the disembodied spirits that fell are by far more than the number of human beings on earth that's why ten thousand of them will not mind finding accommodation in one man there is a desperate need for accommodation among those demon spirits till today look at look at how they cry when you want to cast them out that means they don't <laughs> listen are you seeing the extreme violence now please don't feel bad many of you have been delivered many of you will be delivered this night but listen notice that you will see a kind quiet person brother or sister and all of a sudden when those spirits are provoked by the power of god it will take five people to suddenly hold one person 
you see the way people are rolling on the floor there is no power you try rolling like that by yourself and see what happens another entity this disembodied spirit to the point that when jesus was about to cast them they begged him they said jesus you know our condition you are not in ignorance as to what is happening to us where do you because they know it's hard to find a body that can allow you to be comfortable that's why when they find it they go straight to the realm of your mind and create a system that makes sure even if they evict them they can still come back please understand what i'm teaching you and you will be free you will experience victory and you will possess your possession demon spirits they are everywhere today as i'm talking now there are demon spirits around hoping and waiting where will i get accommodation now are we together now where will i get accommodation now this is what it means for spirits to die when they say demon spirit should die is the restlessness that is created by exiting it from a mortal body it is an intense state of torture no spirit no spirit is like putting you inside water and dropping you there that's exactly what you do when that's why they cry and they beg they make sure they don't leave they negotiate all kinds of things jesus have you come to cast us shall we have a time now jesus said go say let's look at they drowned the swine they were so desperate for bodies they entered pigs for a few minutes just so that they can find a place to rest the pigs were entering water they said yes let's just be rested before you enter the water you see why satan hates deliverance you may not know what it is that is the reason why when you cast out devils you are in trouble because satan will mobilize any kind of attack on your life at on anything he knows what is happening is God helping us are we understanding something so this spirit but there are other kinds of spirit I hope you know that the fallen angels that fell with Lucifer are not the only angels that have fallen <laughs> there are many group of offenses there are others who fell so bad they are in chains now they are not even allowed to be featured in that's the level of wickedness those guys are more wicked than satan himself what they did to god we'll find out when we get to heaven that god and they they were cast down not to the earth satan was cast down and left in the earth but these spirits were taken straight to the bottomless pit and were bound there with chains because for the sake of the elect they were not left on earth what would they have done that means even satan would have been afraid of them i'm demystifying this thing to you whether it comes as occultism whether it comes as ogoni there is a central system of operation is when it comes to execution that all those variations come the foundation of all of this is this spirit finding a resting place and when this <sighs> these angels watch their children called demons move around with no bodies in intense torture and so they say let's work together we will coordinate you while you enter the people will tell you what to do and so paul said wow so there are principalities there are powers there are rulers then there are others who don't operate in the earth realm they are spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places they all coordinate themselves one one demon spoke on behalf of ten thousand of them it was when jesus asked him who are you he now said we are many oh forget that you are hearing only my voice there is a an intelligent organogram brothers and sisters if one human body can host ten thousand demons then it's important for you to listen one demon one body can be so powerful if one body can host god why can't it host demons that a man's body can be the temple of the living god
let me just compose myself and get somewhere because if you don't understand this what are you delivering you see where we miss it we just come and tell somebody there's a spirit oh yeah we bend his head and just turn him around oh yeah you must come out sorry sorry yeah i'll hug you after i'm done with my example and you turn his head round, and the guy just says man let me just quietly fall for this guy to leave me in peace and he just falls down and you you tell him to say thank you jesus he repeats after you you get up and you are happy <laughs> and the demon spirit say wow what ignorance advantage advantage demon spirits can dwell in your spirit demon spirits can dwell in your mind demon spirits can dwell in your body when you tell somebody you cast a demon it just comes out you don't know where it came out from it will re you the same way it comes out from your spirit your soul and your body physically it will look the same it takes discernment to know what happened and the authority of scripture that guides you if that person you are delivering is a believer then you know certainly it must not be from his spirit because he that is joined to christ is one spirit are we together but that does not mean this is where many of us have been surprised because for many years you believe that no these demons cannot find expression you came for koinonia to your surprise praise and worship was going on and all of a sudden you are feeling as if somebody is drawing your clothes you are saying what is happening the next thing you are sweeping the ground you are waking up after 10 minutes what is wrong and you are a pastor and you are, you are, you are a, 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 a prayer leader and your members were watching and say oh god prayer leader what i hope that this impact we received impartation a night before this deliverance so what really entered us no you don't stigmatize people a spiritual childishness to think just because a demon was casted out that no 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 you don't do that the fact that you are being delivered is a sign that you are in mount zion it's not something that should make you ashamed the, the, that means you have gotten to a place where the light and the power of god is forcing those spirits to be uncomfortable it's a thing of joy You have to understand these demon spirits because they are everywhere there are many ways they can enter that's why they are desperate you can know that these spirits are let me tell you this those spirits have on you their characteristics you know that they are in or around your life because whatever they produce in your life is abnormal are we together a demon spirit can find expression and you can start having abnormal passion for food you can eat the food of 10 people it's called gluttony it's not a medical condition the spirit is eating through you even you you know that by myself i cannot eat this kind of food listen listen this spirit now enters you and begins to manifest an unusual passion then you marry one wife the spirit is not satisfied with one woman you now say oh let me just be careful this is my one and only wife the spirit says no way and all of a sudden you add 12 more and the spirit he says more you add 12 more and the spirit says you are delaying me let's let's switch to to the point that the spirit can be patient if he doesn't find women it will make a man like a man it's not normal these are the spirits behind it listen very carefully that's what happened in the days of noah these spirits you see are not weak they are not foolish they are not stupid the moment they find a body they start manifesting their characteristic the same way when the holy spirit finds a body all of a sudden an anointing you shouldn't have i shouldn't know your name where did it come it's obvious that it's not me something has taken charge of my faculties and is revealing to me something that i should not know ordinary me if i stand close to you maybe if we fight you will even beat me but all of a sudden i will lift my hand and this guy is on the floor now is that me no the same way i'm supposed to give you peace ordinarily but because of the demon spirit in me when i come near you your life must scatter it's not me hear me married people this is a mistake 
people are coming with forces and influences they don't even know and you find uh, this is the mistake that prophets make again listen carefully especially if you're in the prophetic here because they now look and say oh your wife is a witch she's not a witch for some reason she's she's hosting a habitation of certain spirit beings that are creating an effect even her she will tell you i don't know why everybody i come near if it's their business it dies if it's everything it dies are you seeing why some of you the moment somebody comes to say i love you i want to go and see your parents the spirit in him will say am i not already there so what do you want to do now tragedies listen very carefully those spirits feed on things and they put in you desires that will continue to feed them while they remain that's why you can sit down and they will wake you in the night to carry your laptop and type something you should not watch and you are watching you hate what you are watching but the spirit is feeding on it it is the atmosphere that will keep it there your majesty your majesty that come to you in the dream world they carry the face of a man they carry the face of a woman they carry the face of an object a loved one it doesn't matter they are doing something to you all of a sudden you want to give someone a job and you say by tomorrow please come and collect the job you go to bed notice all of a sudden they have come the dream will carry different you may see yourself in primary school second it doesn't matter what form it comes they are still the ones listen to me all of a sudden they may come and molest you they may come and do whatever they want to do and you stand up in the morning to you you don't know what happened you dress very smart sir i've come to collect my employment letter and the man will say if i see you here you had the testimony of our mommy here how can you tell somebody else this is what has made many of your helpers to leave you they will promise you send me your account and all of a sudden you go to bed and those spirits are here we don't know the bible said lest satan should take an advantage of you for we are not ignorant ignorant this is the number one cause number one cause number one cause of barrenness number one cause of impotency the jealousy of those spirits the very jealousy of those spirits with all honor to our doctors i love doctors but i'm telling you this is it can i surprise you i want to tell you something that many of you may not believe i hope and pray that you may believe it i that's why you see i struggle with tonight's teaching it is possible for a woman to carry a seed that is for both her husband and these spirits i wish i'm not the one teaching this sometimes this 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 work is very hard sometimes it's true go back to our villages and hear what our great grandparents with divination used to say sometimes they will see a child and stand and say no let me look at this child and look at this child and look at this child and say no something is wrong and this child is born with unusual trouble and unusual abilities usually doesn't last for too long and just dies and goes but within that 12 to 15 years the trouble that that child causes for the family what can this one is not a deliverance issue this is another seed that is not human can I tell you this don't feel bad we are praying don't feel bad this is how fibroid is formed 
what you call fibroid is the aberration of the intercourse between these spirits are we together now an attempt for these spirits that's why it grows in the same place where a baby should grow as a baby is growing is growing too and notice that 90 percent of the time it will kill the baby yet you say it's not alive from the womb already ask jacob and esau that from the womb the children were already there they were already fighting ask jesus and john you call them they are just fetuses whereas there was communication going on when mary met with um elizabeth the babies too met with themselves how are you how are you well now we're coming oh I will come before you make sure you do it nice they were interacting please sit down when you know these things you will appreciate the power of god and the victory of christ i know this may look like a messy teaching tonight but just allow me tidy this up and then you will walk back and now find out that nothing just happens nothing watch this these demon spirits till today until jesus comes they are searching for bodies to find expression they are in our fathers that's why our fathers behave unusually they are in our mothers that's why they behave unusually wife that's the mystery behind the stubbornness and your wise decisions of your husband he may be well-meaning notice that most of those people a time can come they are calm and understanding and peaceful and cooperative and then suddenly something comes when you are bringing someone out of a prison cell there's a sign here that you will never steal anybody's thing you will sign and say i won't do anything say oh yeah be born again I'm, i i i will be a serious person i will even be serious for the first two days he will go to the farm doing well until that spirit now knows there is a stronghold are we together i will teach you this on deliverance there is already a doorway that allows it so the spirit goes on vacation as that brother is in the farm he will make another person annoy him because all these attributes of the flesh are doors with a simple anger it returns it has entered the guy doesn't know all of a sudden the guy gets up and says you hit me and beats him and kills him he's back to the prison he's wondering what am i doing on my way back to the prison the spirit has come back to his house because when a spirit leaves a man it doesn't wave at you it allows for some time the frustration of a lack of habitation will make it come back and say that womb i left let me go back and find out what is there oh there is a child there now that home i went there is joy now i need a space for myself and the moment they find expression they will have to start executing their own attributes have you not been surprised look at those who steal if they are under the influence of that demon hide anything anywhere the person will stand is like word of knowledge he will just look around and say Cat, lift that carpet you will carry the money there he doesn't know it's true i'm telling you this you know i'm not lying you hide the money anywhere one day you hide it inside the ceiling he will just stand and stand and look up the spirit is saying look up that's where it is i know i know a true story a true story of a couple i counseled some years ago they were about to get married all of a sudden from nowhere very wonderful lady who loves the lord the lady brought a report crying that they said she was positive with hiv she, even me i was surprised because a lady that I know very well behaved lady i said what happened where did that one come from and all of a sudden when i was looking in the realm of the spirit god just opened my eyes and I, as soon as i touched that spirit something strange happened now I'm, I'm not saying you should go out and create trouble but something strange happened the spirit started manifesting and speaking around and he said at the point of the test it entered the doctor doctors you are my friends i'm just being thank god you are born again we just finished an outreach there are many things that if we do not know there are many people carrying reports that are not true there are many people carrying things that are not true it is this same spirits that appear 
what is HIV? HIV is called AIDS. Abi acquired is acquired, meaning it's not within you. It came from somewhere. Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. I'm, I, I hope I'm right. Where do you think it came from? Where do you think cancer came from? When you understand this, you will know why all of a sudden Jacob did something. Do you know? I will be showing you. Jacob slept and had a dream. And Jacob saw where the males that pregnanted the female goats came from. He was in a dream. He looked above and saw that all the males in the realm of the spirit were spotted. Hi. <laughs> it was not Laban's males. No. They came from somewhere. That's why it didn't matter what Laban said. The results were manipulated from the realm of the spirit. When you are assisted from the realm of the spirit, it doesn't matter what the disadvantages are. There is a system to change everything. This is not my discussion this night. But I don't, don't tempt me to have to go and show you, please. That these spirit interactions must be there for Satan and demons to find expression. No man just enters trouble like that. And no man just comes out like that. There must be that spirit interaction. Let me show you something. You're tempting me for us to... Genesis 30. Let's look at it. Genesis 30, 25. We'll look at 25 to 43. Jesus, thank you. Pray in the spirit, please, while we are opening this. Hallelujah. Look at this. Look at this. Let me talk about Jacob and Laban now. I'm establishing a point here. And it came to pass when Rachel was born, Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, send me away that I may go to my place and my country. We're reading. It's a long reading. Let's see how fast we can go. Just keep, just keep projecting and let's go. He said, give me my wives and all of that and all of that. Go to 28. Jacob is discussing with Laban now. And he said, appoint me thy wages and I will give thee 29. We're reading down to 40 there about. And he said, thou knowest that I have served thee and how thy cattle was with me. 30. For it was little which thou hast before I came. And it is now increased to a multitude. And the Lord had blessed thee. Who blessed thee? Talk to me. Who blessed thee? The Lord has. We'll see how that Lord did the blessing. The Lord had blessed thee since my coming. And now, well shall I provide for my own house? 31. And he said, what shall I give thee, Jacob? He said, don't give me anything. If thou will do with this one thing, I will again keep thy flock. What is the one thing? 32. I will pass through the flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and of such they shall be my hire. So he's saying, I will go round your ranch. All the cows and the sheep that are spotted, I will pick them. At this point, they were not many. I hope you know that. And then he says, So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come. When it shall come for my hire, you know, this and that and that. Everyone that is not speckled or spotted, he was saying that, if you find it with me, then take me as a thief. Are you getting the idea now? The Bible says, So Laban said, Behold, I would that it might you know might be done according to your word 35 and he removed that day all the goats that were ring straight and spotted and so on and so forth and so forth go to verse 40 go to verse 40 jacob went on a journey there's uh, there's no time to prove it but you will see that jacob simply went on a journey for three days jacob returned back after three days and suddenly saw spotted calves he said no something is going on here the goats and cows and sheep were not pregnant the normal time that goats there because the males that got them pregnant were not part of the fold they came from somewhere the same way the bible never says jesus was pregnant for nine months no it's not on record that jesus was pregnant for nine months Jacob did separate the lamb and set the faces of the flocks towards the ring stake and all you know all of this and he put his own flocks and put them you know this and that 41 and it came to pass whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive that Jacob laid the rods before his eyes 
the eyes of the cattle in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods when we read to 43 we stop there but when the cattle were feeble he puts them not in so the feebler were labans and the stronger jacobs last verse 43 then we'll go to verse 41 and the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and made servants and men servants and camels and asses now go to chapter 31 let me search it here 31 from verse 10 to 13. genesis 31 read with me one to read and it came to pass at the time that the cattle had come i just jumped from verse one to nine verse one to nine was the frustration of of laban's sons they started saying so now jacob has taken everything what inheritance do we have and the bible is showing us how god assisted jacob to produce that result are you ready and it came to pass that at the time that the cattle conceived that i lifted up my eyes and saw where in a dream so jacob was dreaming and the dream now revealed what was happening that was not there physically what did he see in a dream i behold the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring staked speckled and i beheld i saw in my dream that there were some cattle that were making these ones to be pregnant that were not part of the are, are you with me now he's not awake oh he's seen in a dream 11 hmm. and the angel of the lord so the angel was there we know that there are angels and other cattle came from another realm he spoke to me in a dream and he said jacob and i said here i am verse 12 hmm. and he said lift now thy eyes and see all the rams an angel is showing him another ram somewhere that is not part of laban's flock all they needed was laban's females the males came from another realm the same way all the fallen angels needed was the females of men the males were the angels with their seed all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring staked speckled and grizzled for i have seen i had to introduce some other animals to come and give you speed of result because i have seen the wickedness of laban so i came to assist you with extraordinary result that is not of this realm 13 i am the god of bethel this is why i'm doing it where you anointed with a pillar and where you vowed a vow unto me he said arise get thee out of this land and out of thy kindred jacob woke up and all of a sudden the males were not seen physically but when the females gave birth they were all speckled and laban said how did this thing happen but god said jacob let me show you so when you see a woman frying akara and building a house with that akara there is an assistance it, it cannot just be about ten thousand no the realm of the spirit came to assist men this is a testimony of this ministry this is a testimony of my life we are not alone he sent his angel there is the angel of his presence and if you don't believe what i just taught you the devil will destroy you and you will never now when you see unusual results you don't question it because i have shown you that heaven can assist men he said remember the bethel i am the god of bethel so was that angel an angel I am the God I came to supervise your speed I have seen how Laban mocked you and is it not me that said I will restore so let me do it now I will bring my own male cattle from everywhere are you seeing why the Bible said the cattle on a thousand key where is it it's not a location on earth the cattle God has it The next time somebody gets a miracle alert and you are asking where did the money come from does that sound wise no lest satan should take advantage of us for we are not ignorant i have taught you now that the realm of the spirit can assist men 
the same way when you see so that you stop this counseling that doesn't make sense you see an unusual thief an unusual troublemaker a man who marries 11 wives and is not tired that man does not need counsel what's the name of that group that used to discipline men that social group social welfare even if you like report him to efcc there is a spirit a normal man should be satisfied with his wife alone the moment a spirit comes no unusual characteristics unusual attributes unusual wickedness when a man carries a knife and takes one of our little ones here and is slaughtering a baby like this my brother my sister that's not a normal human being a spirit is using his hands to hold a knife remember that when these spirits show up they are so wicked jesus said one of the signs he says before the coming of god it shall be like the days of noah that means there will be a repeat of this again these spirits in an unusual way will multiply wickedness but the hope is that the power of god too and the assistance from heaven will also be multiplied upon the saints that means that the revivals that are coming you will see dimensions of the spirit at work in a man that you have never seen in church history So accidents don't just happen no you are just driving and then the car just veers off my brother the car did not just veer off a spirit attempting in frustration to either kill you don't feel bad don't feel bad whether that happened to your loved ones so that's why God is teaching us a pastor can have a ministry and when the ministry wants to rise because he's ignorant of this that spirit can enter him and all of a sudden you will find out that is five months of intense hatred from members they will hate you for no cause and the ministry dies less satan should take an advantage of me demons can enter people demons can enter homes they can enter churches when they enter they execute the will of satan you can be born again they will not touch your spirit but i guarantee you they will come to your mind and build a fortification around your mind and still feel safe as though they were in your spirit so that your being born again makes no difference as far as you are concerned this is the mystery behind these things so you see them in your sleep when you wake when you sleep and you wake up and read like i shared with you ah we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness and you don't know who to tell you are sad good things want to happen this wicked spirits come in let me tell you progress and breakthrough is not very difficult it's the spirits that make it so hard you are near your breakthrough like this do you know these spirits can relocate your destiny helper just so that you will suffer while men slept the enemy came with his seed and planted it don't feel embarrassed that when you look at your life you see the outworkings of these seeds because i don't know if we have that time now if we don't have it we'll do part four at after the miracle service no problem i don't just want to rush this you have to appreciate this for me to teach you the dimensions of deliverance because casting out a spirit is only one of the dimensions of deliverance if you stop there you didn't do well because the spirit will return are we together if i push this door open and i leave that door open am i still safe please talk to me that spirit for sure will come back their determination to return to you was not left as a secret in the bible the bible is very clear about the fact that if a demon leaves you it will try to come back that's why you find out that people can be free for 10 years from poverty and then 17 years the spirit now comes he says, it's been a while let me come back a man can be married loves his wife after she gives him three or four children and then all of a sudden what he was doing when he was 20 21 comes back when he's 41 that's why you find out that a man loves god and is working passionately 
and then before you know it when he's age 55 he will go back into a gay lifestyle or do something and you are wondering at 55 the american nation ignored this satan proposed a doctrine to the west that exited the issue he, he just created a safe zone for himself in our teachings notice that satan didn't remove everything he just found the hardest part of it and created a theology that keeps him safe and look at the result today listen hold on guys let me tell you this listen to me I have been a victim of these things that I'm telling you if you don't conquer this thing you will never last are you getting what I'm saying now that's the reason why it looks like no matter no matter how you do well oh um, there's no cause in my life I am free I don't have any no devil don't talk about any cause to me the spirit will just keep quiet and be watching you and all of a sudden the same way it took your father and rubbished his life took your mother and rubbish her life you will suddenly find out that you got married you find out that you got married watch this and all of a sudden you will become a replica of your father a replica remember he started with your father slapping your mother he said sorry once then he did it again the third time he said i won't say sorry again i will give you a dirty slap i paid your dowry now because you thought you were a pastor it will leave you just like that and then you keep managing it for a while and then after nine years the demons will make sure it bites you where it is hard and you turn and give her a slap and find yourself and two of you will sit down and counsel yourself say it will never happen and before you know it you would have done it many times I'm not telling you this to show you how powerful Satan is. I'm only giving you a sense of appreciation because deliverance is possible and complete deliverance is possible. If complete deliverance does not happen to you, you will never possess your possession. Believe me. Believe me. This is the Bible. Obadiah 1.17. Please give it to us. The sons of Jacob will possess. It is their possession. But there is a mystery. Are you seeing why many of our parents just said don't worry i will get the job for 25 years they didn't get any other job 25 years no other job no lifting what of the families where women are the ones who feed the men if you are a man and you ever try to rise up those horns will squash you down when mommy called me sorry to just make reference to her i saw her text the fact that i don't reply your text doesn't mean i don't look at it when i saw her text i knew immediately what was wrong i knew that they were controlling powers that have followed the life of this dear young man i prayed for him here before he left and i knew that if god does not help this man you will be surprised that one day are you seeing why people go abroad for 10 years and return back like thieves you don't hear from them from a long time you think they built houses they are coming to give you money they return back in shame they start moving from country to country through deserts to arrive in lagos when the young man sent me a text i looked at it somebody gave you a job and people don't just change their mind when things just change suddenly just know that the spirit just came in the same way if it can change for the positive i hate you but i just change you know that ah this is the holy spirit the holy ghost has stepped in the man and i called him how are you my friend he said fine i said let's pray i said when i pray for you you are going to get the job father in the name of jesus it's not what i'm saying jesus said go it is what you are standing on it is not just the articulateness of your words it is the office and the revelation that backs you so you can say one word go and the demons don't hear go the demons see all the mysteries that support what you are saying this is what produces result many people think it is in the articulateness of the english 
I now standing by my left adjure you that you move no, that is grammar my brother demons don't hear grammar the revelation when Jesus said go go is not enough to take demons away it was the rock that he was standing on two houses were built it is the rock you are standing on he said this is how I will build my church you will not just speak it is what you are speaking on that supports your results when I prayed for that gentleman I just dropped the phone I knew what would happen because all I did you would think it is me that produced the result I know what to tell the Holy Spirit I know the factor that must be introduced in that equation I knew that except the angel of the Lord comes to rescue and because they are always ascending and descending they confirm the words of his messengers all I did was to create space for the Holy Spirit let there be space for you in this equation and all of a sudden he steps in and I don't know how many hours I don't think it was up to three hours you see mommy dancing here she's not just dancing for nothing that's why you hear somebody say I just came for koinonia and things the things didn't just change God will examine your equations and see how you threw him out and just say okay let me be introduced here and all of a sudden things change things change I will stop here so that we'll pray after miracle service I will teach you now on casting out devils and I'll teach you deliverance through transformation and the discipline of conformity all of this will come in let's do part four let's not rush this thing I want us to take some time hold on before you stand up to take some time to pray it is not a secret that these demons are around they use all kinds of ways to enter your life and the flesh is their greatest access you are alone in the room and you are hearing sounds bam ceiling window looks like it's opening they are looking for an access point how can I make this person fear and doubt the faithfulness of God so that I can find expression in his life you are just hearing like wind is blowing all of a sudden you imagine somebody has to be near me and then anger have you noticed that every time good things are coming a good relationship a brother just comes just at the point he's about to propose that week something dangerous happens you are at your angriest point and the brother says no I can't marry you then you return back these are the spirits playing on the minds of the saints messing up our breakthroughs the day you are supposed to go for a job interview you are running then your car breaks down your car didn't have any business breaking down but it broke down as soon as you arrive there they say sorry the gate is closed so you stand there and say life not life spirits spirits my brother spirits they are about to pay your father his gratuity the demons will hook the money until the day they diagnose him of having cancer that will spend 150,000 for chemotherapy and the rest then the money suddenly comes and because you have to use it to spend it and spend it and spend it and spend it how about students that enter the exam hall they thought they went alone you conduct tutorials for others and enter the exam hall as soon as you sit down you look at the paper but i solved this question yesterday night what happened these demons hijack your understanding when you are out of the exams you go back and see the paper in your house that you solved it with sometimes you're on your way to the exam to write your final year exam and you forget one question paper in your pocket you didn't forget you were assisted to leave it there all of a sudden an invigilator comes and says, what is that stand up and said no that's it you are going listen to what I'm telling you because God delivered me myself it will be impossible to be doing ministry at this level just talking and saying this I am a product of the deliverance that happens upon Mount Zion There are people, there is no good thing you give them that blesses them. Give them money, it will be the reason for their trouble. Help them, give them favor, they will cause trouble. 
our loved ones may be like that for many years the church has been deceived and misled into thinking everything is just normal into thinking oh everything is fine i am okay just because we have some little money we allow the devil fool us into believing that we are all right the devil can allow you to continue being a preacher keep winning uh, the the loss keep healing the sick while he hijacks your mind and continues to do what he's doing at age 12 you see your son already reproducing you and you are saying my god what is this brothers and sisters i tell you the truth by the authority of the word of god i know that i'll be criticized by many people for these teachings but let me tell you this i was called into the office of an apostle listen i share with you a mystery that will help you to possess your inheritance i will not lie to you and sit you down and allow the devil tear your life into pieces let this deliverance be perfected in you you will you will be shocked at the things that will happen you're already hearing testimonies job will become child's play everything will become child's play barrenness stories there are many of us who would have been in ministry by now the call of god is upon you you know the call of god is upon you but these spirits won't let you rest they are all around you they will make sure that every helper god brings to your life you do something to them that drives them against you that's why some of us don't have friends it's not like you are bad the moment a friend comes to your life wonderful person oh i i i love you i want to help you the spirits will make something happen you will betray the person you will lie against the person you will do something stupid that will kill your opportunity and all of a sudden they will leave you but tonight brothers and sisters the devil is a liar i don't know if there's someone here who is tired who is saying enough is enough i can't let this happen if you are free your loved ones are not free so in any case there is something for you to do I've not yet taught you next the next time we meet when we now start talking of deliverance we are going to look at the deliverance ministry of Jesus just Jesus leave Paul leave this just Jesus and we are going to see what Jesus did with this spirit and you will see that Jesus said this kind go it not there is a kind you don't just generically tell demons go no there are different spirits the way you drive a fallen angel from influencing a life is not the same way you cast out a demon now the fallen angels may be illegal occupants but the demons are legal occupants they came by birth the women gave their wombs freely so they are not just run no they have a right This kind goeth not. This kind goeth not. This kind goeth not. Listen, I shared with you during the prayer and fasting. Remember that there is a physical, atmospheric temperature that drives demons by itself. Not um, there is a there is a physical. There are places on earth that demons cannot stay. There's no preacher there the environment itself drives them it's in your it's in your it's in your bible that when a demon leaves a man it goes through where dry regions dry regions hoping it will find something dry that 
it and, and not finding any it's uncomfortable and it comes back who casted it from that place nobody preached with it left that place and preferred to come and fight you than to remain in the wilderness listen witchcraft was a proposition that these spirits brought to men men are not so smart to know that you you should kill somebody there are wicked people from where we come from that will exchange the life even of their children for themselves have you seen old people who don't die every time they are sick you hear that someone is dead and then they, they are alive all of a sudden they become fine no sir read in the bible a king who slew his son to keep his own life ah uh -uh. nobody will bring a knife to my neck to keep it ah we are going to pray it's just going to be praying in tongues now i want you to find a corner my brother my sister take your life serious in the next five minutes instrumentalists just charge the atmosphere for us blast in tongues and refuse upon mount zion and it shall come to pass in that day and it shall come to pass in that day in that day in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder and the yoke from off your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing please pray pray please pray if you are tired hold the hands of somebody that can agree with you Pray for your destiny. Pray. Enough is enough, oh God. The victory of Christ, the work of Jesus on the cross, cannot be in vain. The substitutionary sacrifice of the Son of the living God cannot be in vain.
Hallelujah. We are going to pray. This prayer is a serious prayer. As we pray, sisters, I want you to lay your hands on your womb. As we are praying, brothers, just pray in tongues. I'd like you to declare that no seed of any entity that is not of God will find, I will not give birth to any stranger. No. Pray. No matter the ordinances of the fathers, no matter the enchantments of the ancient, I come by a new order and I declare my womb will produce that seed of the woman that will bruise the head of the serpent. I cause five broy. I cause five broy. Cause every devil. Shapatata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Brothers, I'd like you to pray. The spirit that keeps men in one place. You don't move forward. You don't move backward. You stay. No productivity. Every gentleman here, open your mouth and blast in tongues. Father in the heavens, this is better. Shabbat Katoskata. The yokes, the altars, and everything that time my life, that time my destiny, by the mystery of deliverance, I challenge, I challenge, it is upon Mount Zion, the spirits that cause failure. Shakatoka pitch, Shakatoka Hallelujah. Listen. Demons came into being when the spirit assisted men. So your victory comes into being when the spirit assists you. It says, I am the God of Bethel. I have seen the oppression that Laban has done. The victory will not just happen. Forget about the physical things. In the realm of the spirit, you are going to cry for divine assistance. I provoke the ministry of angels over every affair of my life. Lift your voice and pray. Cry. Are they not ministering spirits? Are they not ministering spirits? My brothers and sisters, are they not ministering spirits? Send to minister for them that be the heirs of salvation. I call for assistance from heaven. Oh God of Jeshurun, the helper of men, the lifter of men, the helper of men, the lifter of men, the deliverer. Shakatos Kataba, angels on assignment. Angels on assignment. Angels on assignment. Angels on assignment. Judging the wicked. Delivering the prophecy of God concerning my life.
Alleluia. We are going to pray. Every attribute of the flesh that gives access to any spirit in my life by the mystery of the blood, I declare that that door is closed forever. Lift your voice and pray. Come on. Lift your voice and pray. still pray I tell you I feel fire in this place listen everything God has shown you either as a revelation from his word or as a revelation from the realm of the spirit you are going to declare Jacob did not just see the spotted calves and left them in the realm of the spirit they had to come and interact the word must become flesh I like you to lift your voice and cry Jacob's Katabata. Every anointing, every mantle, every mandate, every dimension, the prophetic, the apostolic, prosperity, increase, speed, deliverance that God has shown me. Lord, you showed me victory. I declare, I declare, I declare, it must find expression. prayer we are going to pray listen carefully whether you are an usher or not please if anyone is under the anointing or manifesting around you just help them are we together the very serious prayer we are going to pray now you are going to pray that if by any means there is any spirit entity in my life or around me it's time for you to come out it's time for you to go listen as you pray this prayer, many strange things will start happening to you. Don't worry about it. You just focus on this prayer and pray with all your heart and watch what happens. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ that any spirit entity finding expression in my mind in my body around my life hear the word of the Lord I cast you out of my life now lift your voice and pray pray fire is falling pray fire is falling Shabakatata. I cast every spirit. I cast every devil. I cast every spirit by the power of the Holy Ghost. My mind, my body, around my life, around Koinonia, in the name of Jesus, 
around my family. If you are married, also pray for your family. Pray for your children. I cast every devil. The Lord is healing fibroid. Now, the Lord is ministering to me. A mighty deliverance is going to happen now. It's starting with ladies. Any spirit entity that comes in the form of a man and attempts to oppress you in the night, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, let the fire from heaven fall right now and command i command that spirit to go help them right now any spirit entity using the face of anyone to molest you and close doors inside outside i command deliverance now i command deliverance now let the daughters of jacob possess their possession in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. I'm hearing in my spirit uncontrolled anger. It's a spirit. It's living people right now. Uncontrolled anger. It's, a, it's an unusual anger. Rage. It comes, you can tear anything and you can do anything. I'm seeing fire in the name of Jesus. Anyone who is a victim of this oppression. Right now in the name of Jesus, I bring you deliverance. I bring you deliverance by the power of the Holy Ghost. Uncontrolled anger. I come against it now. Please help her. Shata skota ba shata diasa. Embra kato sabaro kato shakete balakaria. I'm seeing a vision. And the Lord is asking me to pray on that case. In this vision, I'm seeing someone dream. That's what I'm seeing now. And in that dream, you keep seeing yourself going back either to your old house or to a primary school or writing an exam you are finished. It's a strong spirit of delay. I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. Help your wife. Right now in the name of Jesus. At the count of three, 
the spirit of delay hear the word of the lord let god's people go now one two three i command that spirit go now go now please help them go now this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind no devil should take you back again i command that spirit go now i cost that spirit now if there is anyone you know whether you are here or anyone you know that for some reason has not been able to take in in the name of barrenness whether you are here or you are standing for them i want you to agree i want to pray let's see the devil that will stop them from taking it in the name of jesus anyone you know and you are standing for that the devil i don't care what the medical report is that the devil has come to make sure that they will not celebrate children in the name that is above all names we release children from heaven in the name of jesus we release children from heaven we open every barren womb in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the lord is showing me a group of people you see you have dreams frequently and in the dreams you see yourself receiving things and it's something that in the physical you are hoping to receive but the moment you see it in that dream it will never happen again it's an irony it's like the opposite of what you see in dreams is what happens the lord is asking me to deliver those people now please help her help her just stand near your wife so that she doesn't have to fall right now in the name of jesus in the name that is above all names I decree and declare from the realm of the spirit let there be deliverance for you now let there be deliverance for you now Just two more points and we're done. Look at me. If you have seen this pattern I'm about to describe in your family, then I want you to listen carefully. It's always that the future is worse than the past. You never have a situation where you leave certain things and go higher and higher. You look at all your loved ones. They once worked. They once married. They once had children. They once had a house. You are in a situation where the future is never brighter than the past. It's always once upon a time this was happening. I need to crush that devil from your life. Please help them. Once upon a time I was rich. Once upon a time I was married. Once upon a time I was on fire for God. Once upon a time I was a pastor. I had a church. No. The path of the just is as a shining light that shineth ever brighter unto the perfect day. When your tomorrow becomes worse than your yesterday, there is a spirit reversing the equation. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. In the name that is above all names, I declare that any force from hell that is responsible for aborting a glorious tomorrow to take the events of the past and still bring it into your tomorrow right now at the count of three i declare that spirit must let you go one two three let them go now let them go now by the anointing of the holy ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, 
hallelujah please just be patient with me we'll end now my spirit is heavy circles of repeated sicknesses i want to pray now it's not a normal thing whether it is hepatitis whether it is a blood related disease or whether it is every month malaria every month malaria every month typhoid you treat it it still comes back every month headache every month whatever it is hold on please the lord is showing me something i just saw like a pile of money and then i saw it disappear and the lord said there are people money physically disappears like lives their life i'm not saying you waste it you can keep ten thousand and come back and find seven thousand and nobody was in that house it's not just money items you can wash clothes and hang it you you didn't steal it you will come back you will not find it listen well this is a, a deliverance series just allow me to help that lady I'm seeing a lady in a vision now. You were alone. You washed your underwear in the night. By the next day, you didn't find two of them again. It's gone. From that day, something happened in your life in a strange way. Severe menstrual pain is one of the things you started having. Uncontrollable pain. In the name of Jesus, everything the devil has taken from anyone, I decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit, let there be restoration now. Let there be restoration now. Let there be restoration now. The Lord is showing me someone. Every time you see someone die in the dream, a few weeks later it will happen physically. Now you have seen your loved ones. You saw them last week. You saw like a, somebody was announcing to you that so I don't know if it's your mother or something that died. If we don't pray for you, it's going to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? I prophesy right now upon your life. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I command that death to pass over your family. I command that death to pass over your family. Hallelujah. Just, just let me just talk about two issues. I'm struggling to share what God is showing me now. This has to do with a group of ladies. Listen. There is a lady here. Every time you see yourself in a dream, you are a man, not a woman. That's why I'm struggling to share what I'm saying physically you are a lady but every time you see yourself in a dream it's like you are carrying the form of a man this thing has affected you even in the area of relationship if a guy looks at you and says i love you it's like it's like um it's it's like you feel as if you are gay it's it's like something has numbed the capacity to receive love as a lady because of that encounter it's a demonic thing that I have to pray for you for a very demonic thing I'm seeing like smoke this is strange and then it is it's just like moving around in the air wherever those groups of people are I don't believe it's just one person it's an operation of darkness in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands right now and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost be free from that demonic siege now be free from that demonic siege now. Ah, hold on. There is a lady. 
a physical person appeared to you not a dream i'm not talking of your dreaming physically physical like you are seeing me like this appeared to you and was having a conversation with you appeared to you and was having a conversation with you and from that conversation your life was never the same again it looked like it was a woman that was appearing and talking to you like revealing to you some secrets that had to do with the past and from that day you started hearing voices even in the afternoon you can sit down and hear like people are discussing i need to pray for you if i don't pray for you very soon they will admit you in the hospital because they'll say you are talking and behaving like somebody who has a psychosomatic condition wherever that person is in the name of jesus i may not call you out because of time but i declare right now by the anointing of the holy spirit that devil that spirit in the name of jesus be free from it now i was going to pray for repeated cycles of sickness let that be the last let's pray if you know in this place that you find out that certain sicknesses never leave you they keep repeating cycles just place your hand on your chest i'm about to pray it doesn't matter what part of your body and what sickness you just place your hand on your chest i'm going to pray someone will shout under the anointing when that happens the anointing for this healing is not a sickness it's a pattern that god is breaking now the moment that shout happens i will rebuke that and then we are done for the night we will continue the miracle service i'll talk about it shortly thank you jesus just lay your hands there the power of god is looking for one person there's somebody that will shout that's the shout right now in the name of jesus by the anointing of the holy spirit every pattern of reoccurring infirmity reoccurring sickness whether it's a blood related disease every pattern i say it again of reoccurring sickness reoccurring disease right now by the power of the holy ghost i command the spirit responsible lose your hold now 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 hallelujah in this series i gave you an instruction our time is gone i want to give you another one now please listen very carefully i told us we have been doing it i know a number of you may not have been so faithful just try to be consistent do it out of revelation at least 15 minutes in the night wake up and pray pray in the spirit declare the victory of christ just forget about whatever dream or whatever experience you're having just do what i'm asking you to do are we together now the next meeting we're going to be having here is a miracle service listen i'm taking our time our miracle service will not be on friday listen carefully our miracle service will be on monday are you getting what i'm saying now not this friday not this saturday not this sunday on monday please listen on friday you are going to fast on saturday everybody you are going to fast are we together at least if you cannot do to six minimum at least to 12 and that i believe it should even be our little children any adult here should at least be able to reach 12 or 2 you will not die so friday you are fasting saturday you are fasting are we together sunday you are fasting i want you to come on monday the miracle service we are going to start by praying for the sick so that we'll finish that it's going to be a night of in Intense deliverance it please intense anybody you truly love even if it's your loved ones no matter where they are if they can find their way please come 
medical reports bring it all these threat letters whatever just bring it and let's cry to the god of heaven to arise and walk wonders here the plague of death you can collect as many people's prayer requests even if they cannot come just collect it we are going to take at least 30 minutes to just agree and pray in tongues and charge the atmosphere when we come are we together is a prayer is a prophetic is a strong deliverance meeting i just the lord put that in my heart so please listen i'm saying in this media please take note including those outside friday you are fasting just break on your own you don't have to come here or if you have your little friends you can just meet and pray and sleep be very spiritual it's not when you should go to somebody's house and you are disturbing them it's, it's a week of spiritual emphasis we are trusting god to push through that that jericho that dagon must fall once and for all friday you are fasting please don't let food cheat you 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 don't die if you don't eat for a few hours saturday you are fasting sunday you are agreeing you are fasting monday you can eat and do whatever i like you to come here prayerfully and come here spiritual from the opening prayer to the praise and worship participate with all your heart are we together by the grace of god will make it the miracle service but i i will i will see the possibility if because of time we cannot make it both a communion and anointing service then i'll be patient the week that follows as we round up the series then we'll do it but we must combine it it must be a communion service and then an anointing service when i'll be teaching you now the forces of deliverance and the rest but this miracle service on monday i believe with all my heart for God to have given this message, he's going to do something strange. So it's not Friday, it's not Saturday, it's not Sunday, it's on Monday. But you fast on Friday, fast on Saturday. If you have loved ones, those are connecting. It doesn't matter what nation of the world. If they care to follow, they can follow in fasting and prayer. Are we together? Now, let me give you the instructions on how to pray. Am I boring you? Am I wasting your time? on friday because we have to pray with intelligence some of these anyhow prayers we do is what wastes our fasting we just fast and fast and pray and talk to ourselves and we don't get anything from it are we together if you can write please write and and please write and do it on friday your entire prayer for that friday is the mercy of god write it that's all that's all you are praying throughout friday by the grace of god just follow me i'm giving you an instruction in righteousness this is not religion the only prayer look for scriptures that talk about the mercies of god you are praying the mercy of god on your life on your family please just try to follow this instruction just just do as i'm teaching you by god's grace i will not mislead you from all through your prayer you are invoking the mercy of god his mercies are new every morning lord your mercy upon my life lord your mercy upon my past lord your mercy upon my family i cry and i receive your mercy upon my ministry don't go and stop saying oh god the other day you said you are going to give me tea and bread no just leave all that one friday the mercy of god are we together saturday is intense warfare intense warfare you are going to take out time to pray and challenge the gates write down a list of all the things that constitute a challenge in your life whether it is delay whether it is whatever write it down you are going to you are going to pray warfare there are many koinonia messages that you can get that relates to that you can play along if you want and pray in warfare that means that as much as possible aside from a few things that you maybe like school of ministry that we have in lectures if you don't have anything doing please discipline yourself this carelessness sometimes is why the devil prevails over us find somewhere beg your friend to give you access to his room or one corner go to one forest somewhere just stay somewhere and pray your life out pray against patterns and everything you have seen 
Lord, this is what has happened. But I'm standing by the power of the Holy Spirit. So Friday, you are invoking the mercy of God. No, uh, Saturday, you are dealing with patterns and you are dealing with all of this. On Sunday, all you are doing is thanksgiving. That's all you are doing. You are thanking him for everything, for his mercies. You can thank him and praise him in a dance. You can thank him and pray, just play worship, praise him, whatever you have to do. And then on Monday, come with your heart. Write that Egyptian that has followed you and carry them and bring them here with you. And let the God of Bethel arise for us on Monday. So Friday, we are praying the mercy of God. Don't forget. Go and do the assignment yourself. Scriptures, look for scriptures. Go on, on, on Google and all of that. Use different references. Saturday is warfare. Saturday is not praise and worship. Saturday is not thanksgiving. Saturday you are engaging. You are engaging the victory of Christ. Mention situations one by one. And take time to pray. Are we together? And then Sunday spend time singing, dancing, celebrating and thanking God. And then on Monday, we are back. Please, for our online community media, make sure you remind us on Thursday or Friday. Remind us on what to do. Let us know you can put a, a, a media montage or whatever it is. You can add scriptures that can help us. I could give you a few scriptures so that you guide us. You can follow on Facebook and Twitter. We'll be um, keeping you updated. We'll be posting and all of that ask your loved ones i know some who say get out all these things i'm not doing don't fight them just leave them but as many they may not be able to make it on this ground but wherever they are around the world ask them to connect and also follow and you watch what god will do i'm leading you through the same way god led me to be free exactly the instruction god gave me and the things i did is what i'm introducing you to by the time I do the last series of the teaching, you will know why I give some of these instructions. Are we together? Father, we give you all the praise tonight. You are God and there is none like you. We submit to your wisdom. We submit to your grace. And Lord, I know that you have not called the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain. You have enlightened our minds tonight and lord i thank you because even by your spirit there will be a performance in our lives lord even from tonight let your people begin to enjoy strange breakthroughs in the name of jesus christ lord this is a week of deliverance i pray that you end age-long captivities once and for all from our lives in the name of jesus christ amen and amen i want to give someone an opportunity here to give his life or her life to jesus christ you are here you heard me preach you heard the word of god come expressly and you are saying man of god i need to make my ways right please don't be distracted i know we're rounding up let's not distract those who want to give their life to jesus you are at overflow three overflow two overflow one the main auditorium and those connected online you are saying apostle that nature that needs to be replaced that miracle has not happened to me or you are saying apostle i love jesus but at one point or the other things have gone haywire in my life and i need to make my ways right please wherever you are i don't want you to be ashamed please clear the way please clear the way all of you standing at the way please clear the way clear the eyes for them wherever you are you want to make this decision i want you to boldly get up and come right now very quickly very quickly if there is anyone there has to be someone who is saying man of god i'm handing my life to jesus if you are outside please clear the way for them as they come don't be ashamed make your way to the front right now make your way to the front right now if there's someone coming make your way to the front if you are coming overflow three you can just walk to your projector stand but overflow one overflow two and the main auditorium make your way to the front there has to be someone the spirit of god is speaking to let's appreciate them don't be ashamed be bold rise up walk make your way and come to jesus are there people like that clear the way for them outside
hallelujah please clear the way for them i still believe someone is coming there has to be someone if you're coming god bless you come quickly join them join them quickly those coming from the overflow outside quickly please hurry up if you're coming rush quickly 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 hallelujah god bless you if you're joining them come quickly thank you for this great decision i want you to lift your right hand high to heaven and say this from the depth of your heart god bless you my brother if you're coming my dear come quickly quickly and join them say lord jesus say after me passionately say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight i have heard your word and i declare that jesus is lord of my life i declare that from today i am a child of god i'm born again the life of jesus is at work in me i declare that the grace to walk in victory is mine now in jesus name father i thank you for these ones they have come and they have made this decision for you let this decision last 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 in their life oh look at this little child adorable child come my dear go to that man just go to that man he will lead you to christ that man sitting with a baby he will help you father thank you let this decision be real in their lives they will never be the same forward ever backward never even as you have prayed i crush every walkings of darkness over your life and i declare they are gone from your life now and forever in the name of jesus christ amen thank you for this decision please follow this gentleman there are people waving their hands i'd like you to follow all of them this one under the anointing just carry him follow them everyone please appreciate them very quickly hallelujah dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.